Georgia. Georgia Tech, six and four for the season. Head coach Chan Gailey. They've lost the last three in this battle. Desperate for a victory. And moments ago, the introduction of the scholarship seniors. First, the quarterback. From Snellville, the winningest quarterback in NCAA history, number 14, David Green. From Snellville, Georgia's all-time sack leader and 2003 Ted Hendricks Award winner, number 47, David Pollock. David Pollock said to us yesterday afternoon, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge and Tracy Wilson. This is always a poignant afternoon, but this one even more so because this group of seniors, led by the two men we've showcased, has a chance to become the most accomplished football team since the days of Herschel and the Bulldogs in the early 80s. This is the 20th time in the last four years that we've had the privilege of televising a Georgia football game. So we've gotten to know these two young men very well, and it's been our privilege to watch them grow as athletes and as young adults. Todd, I know you share that pleasure. I really do, and I think these two guys, along with Coach Mark Rick, have raised the bar here for Georgia football for many years to come, and when I think of each of these guys, one word kind of pops in my head to describe them. When I think of David Green, I think of poise, and when I played at Penn State, Joe Paterno's mantra with me was, hey, Blackledge, you gotta keep your poise. I've never seen a college quarterback as unflappable under pressure throughout his career as David Green, 40 and 10 as a star many of his biggest moments in big games. When I think of David Pollock, the word is passion. This guy plays with a relentless determination, and he plays every play like it's the very last play he'll ever participate in. And like all great players, he raises the level of play of all the guys that are on the field with him. These two guys have left their mark on Georgia football. When you look around this stadium today, you'll see a lot of kids wearing Georgia football jerseys. Most of them either have number 14 or number 47. Do not be surprised when I asked you for <laughs> that impression again. How about Georgia Tech? What do they have to do to win? Well, they've got to be more consistent than they've been this year. They've got some talent. Three things I think they've got to do in this game. I call them the three P's. They've got to protect the football. In their four losses, they're minus 12 in turnover margin. They've got to plug the running holes. The two teams that have beaten Georgia this year both held Georgia to under 100 yards rushing, Auburn and Tennessee, and they've got to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. The strength of this team is their wide receiving core, led by a phenomenal freshman, Calvin Johnson. It is an overcast, chilly day, 46 degrees as we approach kickoff, a chance of rain. We uh, saw the weather forecast at mid-morning, and there was a, a nasty-looking yellow and red stripe coming through Alabama that was heading this way, so we do have a chance of rain. 97th meeting, Georgia leads the series 55-36-5. Bulldogs have won the last three, and last year was a 34-17 game. Just a, a, a footnote to that, Georgia Tech's uh, game notes would list two more victories, and that goes back to 1943 and 1944. Uh, Georgia says they did not field a varsity football team during that time. It was a club team. Georgia Tech says, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Brandon Coteau will kick off. Georgia won the toss. They have deferred the option to the second half. Georgia Tech will get the ball. They're underway. The line, Thomas, number seven, the wide receiver. Down to the 20 yard line, but he is spilled. And let's check in with the third member of our team. Here's Tracy Wilson. Thanks a lot, Vern. This Georgia team is coming off a disheartening loss to Auburn. So for these seniors, it's their final chance to make a statement and go out on top. Head coach Mark Rick told them just that this week. He said, it's easy to play hard when things are going your way, but it takes men of character to finish the race when some of the goals you set out for aren't there. He said, I just challenge their character to see what kind of men they are right now. When asked how this team will respond today, he said, we're about to find out, guys, that we are. 
Sean. Yes, indeed, Trace. Thank you. Here's the handoff for Sean Grant. He is met in the backfield by Odell Thurman, number 33, the middle linebacker. Well, Georgia is not a high percentage blitz team, but right out of the gate, they're going to bring Odell Thurman on a run blitz. And this caused a lot of problems for Georgia Tech last week when Virginia did it. They blitzed their inside linebackers a lot. And one of the reasons they were successful is they anticipated Reggie Ball's snap count. That's what Odell Thurman did that time as well. He hit that full speed behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of four. Odell Thurman Jr. this season. Looks over at the near side. Jimmy Dixon is the fullback. Here's Reggie Ball back to throw. Goes at left side. Has a man open. Nice throw. Sure was. And they're out to the 29-yard line. Well, the sophomore, Reggie Ball from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Two years starter. This has been a tough season for him. You can see why when you look at the number of interceptions. Yeah, it, it's just he's an enormously talented young quarterback. And uh, I think people are just a little frustrated, Chan Gailey included his head coach, that he just hasn't shown the natural progression as a decision maker. But his talent level is very, very high. But he must play consistent football in the game today. Double tight end set. Sean Grant is the deep back. Play fake. Ball with a nice job of thinking. Goes deep for Calvin Johnson. And there's an example. He had Johnson open early and lofted the ball and almost, almost picked off. Well, that was a play where Thomas Davis, who is oftentimes a very aggressive run supporter, was not fooled at all. Take a look. It's a great fake by Reggie Ball. This looks like a Georgia play, the flat back Ruski. But Thomas Davis, number 10, was not full. He stayed back in pass defense and was able to knock the ball away. That's going to bring on Ben Arndt for the first punt of the game. Thomas Flowers awaits it. This is a poor punt. It'll bounce at the 43 and takes a sideways hop. And so Arndt, who averages 39 per punt, knocked that one only 31 yards. So inauspicious start for Georgia Tech. I had to mention that flat back Ruski because like that. they ran that play Georgia did last year in Atlanta set up Georgia's first touchdown. David Green hit a big completion off of it. And here is David Green 40 and 10 as a starting quarterback. That is the all time record in the NCAA annals. Broke the mark. He shared with Peyton Manning and Peyton called him to congratulate him when he set that mark three weeks ago on first down. Here's Green comes into the near side for the fellow senior, Fred Gibson. And Gibson breaks inside the 45-yard line. That's a gain of 15. And let's check the offensive lineup for Georgia. Presented by Miller. Offensive line, Inman, Jones, Tanner, Gene Gillis, and Dennis Rowland. Thomas Brown, the true freshman. Jeremy Thomas, a senior. Reggie Brown and Gibson, the wideouts, and the tight end, a real factor, Leonard Pope. First down and 10 after the game of 15. And they take the reverse, hand back to Thomas Brown, comes with the left tackle. And he's uh, tackled just short of the 41 yard line. Defensively for Georgia Tech, and it's a an aggressive defense. They will blitz nearly 70% of the time. Henderson, Rado, and Nawai, and Travis Parker up front. Jarris Wilkinson, the best of the linebacking bunch. A. Michael Hall and Chris Reese. And in the secondary, James Butler is a standout. He's joined by Houston, Devon Landry, and Kenny Scott. And Chan Gailey, third season as the head coach at Georgia Tech. Here's Green, no pressure. And it's dropped by his fullback, Jeremy Thomas be third down. Well, you mentioned the blitz packages that Georgia Tech will bring in this game. I mean, they are very creative. John Tenuta, their defensive coordinator, does a great job of mixing things up. They bring people from a lot of different directions, and this is Jarris Wilkinson, number 49, who's going to put David Green on the ground. And they hope to do that a lot. It all starts with their ability to stop the run and then be able to pressure the quarterback. They've got to stop the run first and try to get teams into third down and long like they have Georgia right here. Third down, and the need is set. And here comes Butler, he'll blitz. He's picked up nicely, Green on a line. That's going to be close for the first down. I think his forward progress is going to give him the first down. All right, thank you, Tim. And, of course, uh, the biggest win this season for Tennessee occurred here when they came in and knocked off this uh, Georgia team 19-14. to 14. 
David Green with a brand new mark, SEC most career passing yards. He has surpassed Peyton Manning. Eric Zier drops to third. And he'll probably pass him in total offense here a little bit later in the ball game. Needed a little bit more for that because of some sack yardage that takes off of that total offense yardage. But well within reach. Motion. David Contact. Green gets a snap and drops down. Contact. David Green again, uh, a guy who has started 50 games, and he knows all the tricks of the trade, not just uh, in reading coverages, but using his voice, using the snap count to his advantage. You see him chuckling a little bit there, John a little bit with Eric Henderson, and he got him to jump off sides by using his voice that time. This is an ACC officiating crew. Offside. Number 96 on the defense. Five yards, still first down. That's the smile for David yeah. Green. As hard as amazes me, the guy is lined up right over the football. He's the closest defensive guy to the football, but David Green using a different inflection in his voice, and what happens is that defensive lineman stops watching the football, and he's listening to the quarterback. That's not good. First and five. Looks for help. Gets a little bit from Jeremy Thomas. There's a flag thrown as uh, Thomas Brown is driven out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Well, it was excellent defense pursuit by Georgia Tech. And then they're going to get a holding penalty on Georgia on top of it that's going to knock him back. Again, plugging the running holes is critical for Georgia Tech. Ten yards, previous spot, still first down. Now these two teams played a year ago. There were eight personal fouls in that game, and... Uh, Little uh, aggression displayed. James Butler, Kenny Scott on the sidelines. The holding call brings it back to the 40-yard line. A lot of these kids played with each other, against each other in high school. They've known each other, played on all-star games together. I think there's a little bit of a sense that maybe Georgia is the uh, the more favored team in the state. And maybe a little chip on the shoulder to Georgia Tech players in some ways. Green, right side, dropped. Whoa, ho, ho. Gibson dropped it. Well, a year ago, as we mentioned, there were uh, a total of eight personal fouls in this game. Georgia was penalized 11 times for 113 yards. And Georgia Tech, six for 65. Several fights broke out, one involving Reggie Ball. You know, that Reggie Ball got a personal foul for pushing a trainer. It, it didn't even happen with a Georgia player. It happened with a Georgia trainer on the sideline. And he talked about how he lost his poise in that game. Very emotional for the young players playing against Georgia last season. After the Gibson drop at second and 15, here comes the Blitz again. They give it to uh, Thomas Brown. He circles to the left inside the 30 to the 27. All right, thank you, Tim. Third and four here, scoreless game. 10.43 to go in the opening quarter. This is the first Georgia drive of the ball game. And we got him again. And again, this is a pressure defense. As you mentioned, nearly 70% of the time, they're going to bring somebody, a fifth guy. And they're very antsy right now up around the line of scrimmage. And David Green is taking advantage of that with the use of his snap count. And this is smart. Third and four, if you can get the penalty and get a first down by getting him to jump off sides, you don't even have to make a tough throw. That's easy. Coachman, 97 on the defense, five yards, first down. Mansfield Rotto is uh, the guilty one here. Again, watch David Green. Now, he might shrug his shoulders a little bit. He bops his head. You know, technically, you're not allowed to do that, but he's a guy who's been starting for four years. He's going to get the benefit of the doubt most of the time. But those defensive linemen, they've got to stop listening to his voice and watching that football right in front of him. Five-yard penalty. They needed only four, first and ten. Now Green backs off. Changes the play. He's got Reggie Brown near side. Thomas Brown skips over his teammate, the fullback Gus Williams, but does not quite get back to the line of scrimmage. Eric Henderson, number 56, Mansfield Rotto, number 97. One of the reasons that I said that, that stopping the running game and plugging the running holes for Georgia Tech is so important is because the majority of Georgia's big plays, and when they really get into a rhythm with their passing game, it's off of play action. And that happens when they establish the running game. That's when they're at their best. And the two teams that beat them, Tennessee and Auburn, both shut down the run first and then got off to the field. Second down and 10, officially no game in the last play. 
three wide outs to start. And there's more motion. And we get three flags this time. Now this time, I think maybe there was some movement on the left side. Snap. Full start. Yep. Number 74 on the offense. Five yards. Max Gene Gillis. Max Gene Gillis is right here, number 74. He's the tight guard. And what that means is uh, Georgia, not a whole lot of teams that do this, but they flip-flop their lines. They go tight side and split side. So he doesn't always line up on the left or the right. Wherever the tight end goes, that's where Max Gene Gillis goes as well. Backfield substitution now. Danny Ware, who did not play two weeks ago against Auburn, is in. Screen pass. David Green. Left side almost wow. picked off. Oh boy, Ruben Houston had a bead on that as Green was chased all the way back to the 50. Excellent defense again by Georgia Tech. Watch the pressure come inside. They're going to get to David Green. Too many guys for Georgia to block. And on the screen, Danny Ware was not open. I think the screen was supposed to go to Danny Ware. He never cleared for David Green, and Green luckily able to throw that one away. But that's two times now the Georgia Tech defense has put David Green on the ground. That was number 35, K. Michael Hall. Ware tried to block him, had to let him go, and then uh, Hall almost had the contact. Here's David Green. He's got Gibson. There's six. Touchdown. Senior to senior. And a mistake somewhere in the Georgia Tech secondary. Kenny Scott in the corner had no help from the inside. David Green from Snellville, Fred Gibson from Ware County. Waycross down near the Georgia line. They hook up for the first touchdown of the ball game. Andy Bailey on the extra point. Gibson shut out two weeks ago in that thundering loss to Auburn. Fred Gibson. Big play touchdown, easy when there's no coverage. Georgia on the board first. All right, Tim, thank you. It's 7-0 here with 9-11 to go. In the opening quarter, the touchdown comes on a third and 15, the 19th career touchdown for Fred Gibson. And the last four meetings, these seniors at Georgia have outscored the Yellow Jackets 37 zip. And it's not a big deal yet, but it is starting to rain here in Athens, and uh, they're expecting it to get heavier as the day goes on. Not a big deal for us because we're covered. That's right. And it's a know, big deal for that, Tracy Wolfson. <laughs> that's right. And she, had the, she doesn't have a plastic hat on either. I mean, that hat. It's a nice hat she's got on. There. Yes, it is. Here's Brandon Katu to kick it off. It'll be LeVon Thomas taking it at the five yard line. his feet as he gets near the 40-yard line and there's a little conversation well, we'll go back to this touchdown what I want you to watch are these two safeties right here and what happened was when Fred Gibson ran the post the corner Kenny Scott didn't get any help from this safety this safety Butler helped on the other side on Reggie Brown but watch Dewan Landry just kind of get stuck inside and the corner, Kenny Scott, has no help over the top. That's an easy read and a throw for David Green. And I got to believe that Dewan Landry, the safety, was not in the right position because the other safety was helping on Reggie Brown. Dewan Landry was stuck inside. Second offensive set now for Georgia Tech. Here's Reggie Ball. The handoff goes to Rashawn Grant. He is a cut down as he gets near the 41-yard line. And let's introduce you to this Georgia Tech offense. We've talked about the sophomore quarterback, Reggie Ball. Up front, it's Robinson Rhodes, Andy Tidwell Neal, Brad Honeycutt, and Kyle Wallace. Rashawn Grant, Jimmy Dixon in the backfield. P.J. Daniels might be available, the uh, injured tailback. Calvin Johnson, just a, a terrific talent, joined by Nate Curry. And the tight end is uh, Darius Williams, number 83. Second and six in the ring between the hedges. Right side, ball, 
That's blocked by Jackson to the 20 yard line, or to the 50 yard line. Defensively for the Georgia Bulldogs, and this unit, I think, fair to say, has sniped up the last three games. Uh, Thompson, Golston, Anderson, and Pollock up front. The linebackers, Arnold Harrison, Odell Thurman, and Danny Verdun Wheeler. And in the secondary, we've got Thomas Davis leading Demario Minter, Greg Blue, and Tim Jennings. And I think if you can mark any one thing for Brian Van Gorder's defense, when Thomas Davis got hurt in the second quarter against Florida, I don't know that they ever recovered. For the next three games, they've kind of struggled for an identity defensively. And Sean Grant cuts inside Georgia territory. For the first time, he's down at the 47-yard line. And just to, to follow up on that, Thomas Davis got hurt early in the Florida game, and in that game, they gave up 458 yards to the Gators. Well, then Davis missed the Kentucky game, and Kentucky had struggled offensively. They gained 344 yards against this Georgia defense. And then against Auburn, Davis was back, but not quite 100%, and Auburn kind of had their way with the Georgia defense. So I would expect Thomas Davis is about as good health-wise as he's been all season in this ball game today. See the last three games, over 22 points. Here's play fake. Ball has a man open, he overshoots him. That's Demarius Bilbo, former quarterback, number eight. And it'll be third and eight. One of the things when I've watched tape on Reggie Ball in the last couple days, he, he's had problems with his accuracy. He's got an excellent arm, a very strong arm, but he overthrows a lot of balls, and I think part of that is because sometimes he tends to try to throw it too hard, maybe overstrides a little too much, and the ball sails on him. And he's got to kind of gear it in there now and also know that he's throwing a wet football a little bit as well. Third and eight. Georgia five. They got him. There's the sack. Wow. David Pollock, the, <laughs> the first guy to collapse things. And then Quentin Moses took advantage of it. Now this this looked like uh, a jailbreak because there was not much protection at all. Watch Pollock do right around the left tackle, Leon Robinson, to force the breakdown in the pocket. Here's Pollock coming around the edge, and then on the other side, Quentin Moses with the cleanup duty. So the sack goes to Moses. The assist goes to Pollock. It's fourth and 13. Second one from Ben Arndt. Second one that's ineffective. And this one does take a Georgia Tech roll, but it uh, is out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. At the 19-yard line. So the heavens have opened. It's begun to rain heavily. And it's cold. But we're going to be back. We're going to persevere. Well, here's when judgment becomes important. <laughs> oh, dear. First and ten, David Green, high formation. Play fake. Goes for his tight end, Leonard Polk. He's a big target, 6'7", 265. And he makes that grab for a gain of 11. This Georgia offense really changed for the better when Leonard Pope got more involved in the offense. And really after the loss to Tennessee is when he kind of stepped up. And he didn't have his first catch in the year to the LSU game, the, the fourth game of the year. Didn't have his first touchdown to the sixth game. But now, as you see, six of his last 17 catches have gone for touchdowns. He's been a real weapon in the middle of the field and a big target for David Green. And a first down and 10 for Georgia with a 7-0 lead. They step into the fullback. And uh, Jeremy Thomas, number 41. Well, let's go back to the studio. Thank you, Tim. Second and nine here. You know, there's a lot of talk about who's going to be ready to play quarterback for Tennessee in that championship game next week. But i got to tell you, Rick Lawson is showing something these last two weeks. I'm not sure I'd mess with that. Here's Gibson. And the pass overthrown and double coverage at the 45-yard line. As uh, Dewan Landry, number 20, was covering. And Chris Reese was also back there with Kenny Scott. Cast was for heavy rains this afternoon, so everybody came prepared for that, including the Georgia Tech man. They still have their sunglasses on, though, which is good to see. <laughs> yes. That's wishful thinking, I guess. 
Third down. Out of the shotgun. Timeout called by Georgia just prior to the snap. So the time comes with five minutes and 20 seconds to go in the opening quarter. And the Bulldogs leading seven up. Snap to David Green, and we jump up. Touchdown! Oh, God, a touchdown in the corner! It was, it was Michael Johnson who made the catch and the inimitable Larry Munson who made the call. Larry, who was in his early 80s and uh, justifiably a legend in the South. Had a chance to spend a couple of moments with him before the game today. Third down and 10. And this is where Georgia Tech has been really good this year. Second in the ACC behind Florida State on third down defense. Green near side. Nice timing run. Reggie Brown up a little high. Yeah. Reggie Brown can't make the catch. It'll be fourth down. And that's a wet ball. I mean, that's a throw that David Green can easily make on a dry day, but that ball kind of took off on him a little bit uncharacteristically. I mean, he normally throws a pretty good spiral, and this ball took off on him and uh, sailed too high for Reggie Brown to snag it. Plus, it's harder to catch a wet ball as well. Gordon Ely Kelso on to punt for the first time on fourth down and nine. Patrick Clark. For Georgia Tech, waits it at the 30 yard line. Oh, well, they did have pressure, yes, indeed. And this one is short, taken by Clark, the 34 yard line. Good coverage. Odell Thurman. <laughs> wow. He looked like he was shot out of a cannon <laughs> because they had the first guy blocked. At first, it looked like a little wall was going to set up. And Odell Thurman just blew right through there. Your starting middle linebacker playing on your punt coverage team, and this is why. Big players make big plays, even on special teams. And time now for the Home Depot coach's decision, Brian Van Gorder's decision to move David Pollock from defensive tackle to defensive end. Yeah, he actually came here, and they thought as a freshman, maybe he'd be a fullback, and then they put him at defensive tackle, and towards the end of his freshman year, he was playing some, and then they had a real shortage at defensive end, and they thought, well, let's put David Pollock out there, and uh, David Pollock took it upon himself uh, to make himself an outstanding defensive end. He wasn't really thrilled with the decision at first, but he made it work. Here's the handoff. They come away from David Pollock to Sean Grant into the secondary where he runs into Thomas Davis. That's, uh, boy, frying pan into the fire. You run away from Pollock and you find Davis. He did uh, have a nice gain of nine. Rashawn Grant has uh, has shown some good signs for Georgia Tech. When the season started, he was the number three tailback behind P.J. Daniels and Chris Woods. And both of those guys have gone down in injuries. He had to kind of step in and be the guy in the North Carolina State game. And he's responded very well as a redshirt freshman. He is the lone setback now on second and one. It goes left. First down, Georgia Tech nice all run. the way to the 45. And he got a nice clearing block from Matt Rhodes, number 61. Well, this is Georgia Tech's favorite running play. It's the zone play. It's just kind of a stretch play. They went two tight ends this time. And Matt Rhodes, number 61, with a good block to, to spring Rashawn Grant. And, and their M.O. offensively is to run the zone and then throw outside one-on-one -on -one to those good receivers. And I just uh, looked down at the Georgia sideline, Todd, and David Green is getting some uh, attention from the training staff away from the field of play. Check on that in a moment. On first down. There's the Grant handoff. And Green standing uh, all by himself now. There's Green. Well, I thought I remembered seeing him after the touchdown throw getting up and kind of looking at his lip. He got hit a couple times uh, in the game early. And that's Rashawn Grant who is down and uh, Chan Gailey told me before the game they were hoping that P.J. Daniels would feel okay in warm-ups, and if he was good, that they would still start Grant, but hopefully pay, uh, play Daniels as well. Daniels, uh, the outstanding running back, has missed all or parts of four games this year. Here's Rashawn Grant. 
And uh, let's check in with Tracy Wilson, Trace. Thanks, Vern. I don't have much, but as I'm standing here on the sideline, I watch the trainers work on Green's left thumb. It looks like right now they're taping it up. As soon as I get official information, I'll bring it to you. All right, Trace, thank you. And in the meantime, Rashawn Grant remains down on the field at the 42-yard line. Suffered a hard hit that uh, knocked him down. And time has been called. There's the second hit. Appears to have been uh, the cause of the injury. We'll check when we come back. Training staff and the doctors out on the field uh, still tending to Rashawn Grant, who's now been assisted to a sitting position, but uh, being ever so careful. And uh, in the meantime, David Green did uh, trot off the field and go into the locker room for further attention. Here's Rashawn Grant being assisted to his feet. And a moment ago, David Green took the opportunity to jog off the field and head into the uh, Georgia locker room. Pay attention to that and left as thumb. As Tracy uh, mentioned, uh, they were looking at his left thumb, and I think he may have dinged it on the touchdown pass to Fred Gibson. Take a look after he threw the football. Yeah, and let, I don't know. Just he landed funny on the ground because he didn't hit Eric Henderson. But yeah, he is looking at his left thumb right there at the end of that play. So. Uh, and we don't see uh, P.J. Daniels in the ball game. It looks like is in the play and Chris Woods, the two backs in now for Georgia Tech. And they will go from the set cut. Is in the is number 28. Chris Woods number 24. Here comes the blitz. Ball too high. Oh, he laid Nate Curry out on that one. And they had him open. And that's that's a couple of second down passes that Reggie Ball has had his guy open in single coverage and not able to make the completion. It's a lot harder on third down because Georgia gets into a little bit more of their, uh, their tricky defenses and some of their pressures on third down. Easier to throw against this defense on second down. This is his MFA. It's third down and seven. Plus David Pollock was on the bench on the second down play. He's on the field right now. Here comes the blitz. They screen it left side. Back by Chris Woods. And Woods to the 35-yard line. That might be enough for the first down. All right, Tim, thank you. Fourth and one here. They came up short. Rashawn Grant being assisted to the locker room. Azimafe is the running back. Two tight ends. The handoff. Azimafe bounces back. Stopped. They lost yardage. Gerald Anderson got down low, made the contact. Thomas Davis came up to complete the action. Fourth down one, and his MFA was not very uh, determined there. I mean, he kind of tippy toed in there to the line of scrimmage. You got to hit this hard. Actually, he ran into his own guy, Honeycutt, the guard. Gerald Anderson just knocked the guard, Honeycutt, right back into the backfield, and his MFA had nowhere to go. Georgia takes over on downs, and D.J. Shockley is the quarterback, the junior from College Park, Georgia, who has played in every game save one this year. There's a handoff left side. That's Danny Ware, number 28. Began this season as a freshman running back and rushed for 135 yards in his first game. D.J. Shockley for his career, nine touchdowns, four interceptions, much more of a running threat than his uh, David Green. Well, next year will be his year to uh, to shine here. You know, he's had to battle some injuries, not this year, but the two previous years, a knee injury, a foot injury. As you mentioned, he's played in 24 games, but he has yet to start a game as the Georgia quarterback. But next year will be his time to be the guy. There's the screen pass to, uh, to Sean Bailey. That is a pass and not a lateral, though it was very, very close. <laughs> very close. The one Landry back there. And Tracy's got an update on Rashawn Grant. That's right, Vern. Uh, they diagnosed him with a neck, neck injury. They've taken him back to the locker room for more observation. No update on whether he'll return or not. Thank you, Tracy. Third and seven. 
Green in the locker room, Grant in the locker room. It's 7 0 here. The touchdown came on a pass from David Green to Fred Gibson. This shows you what Georgia thinks about the Georgia Tech third down defense. This is standard personnel, eye formation, maximum protection to protect DJ Shockley. Good job. The Blitz pick up, and there's Pope. Leonard Pope inside the 25. Terrific block by the running back. 35-yard game. A very smart decision. Keep both of your backs in here so you have seven guys blocking, and Pope is going to run right down the middle of the field, and Shockley, with good protection, is going to be able to hit him. You keep both backs in, good protection against a blitzing defense, and then you throw it down the middle to your six-foot-seven tight end. That was a good call on third down. A first down after the 35-yard game, and Danny Ware with the block. Along with that, Jeremy Thomas that uh, gave Shockley the time. And off Ware goes right. Hit by the middle linebacker, Jarris Wilkinson, number 49. He's uh, got the tackle at the 21 yard line. David Green back on the sidelines. Four of nine in the early going, 60 yards, one touchdown. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. I have an update on David Green. He is back out of the locker room. They taped up his left thumb. They have a, he has a sprained left thumb. He will return to the game, though. I okay. Think, yeah, I think it was when he hit the ground. I think he landed funny on the ground at the end of that touchdown throw, and that's when the injury occurred. And off Danny Ware, he comes left to the 19-yard line. All right, third and five. That is the end of the third quarter here, first quarter. As David Green has taped up his left thumb. And we've reached the end of the first. We'll return to Sanford Stadium after this message. And a word from your local station. Best friends. David Pollock said yesterday he's learned a lot about life in the last two years, like how to cook yeah. and how to clean. I'm not sure I'd want to go to his Thanksgiving meal if he was cooking. <laughs> but I think he I think he's pretty mean with a with a foreman grill. He does a lot of chicken breasts on yeah. foreman grills, I think. Third and five at the 19. Shockley still in the quarterback. Here comes the blitz. Shockley dances to his right. Throws it incomplete at the 10-yard line. James Butler was the closest well we've gone back and looked at a couple of uh, pass plays and we think we might have found the specific play where David Green got hurt yeah they tried to throw a screen pass before the touchdown and watch as Green releases the ball he might catch the top back of the helmet of Kamichael Hall number 35 who was rushing the quarterback and that might be where the uh, the injury occurred Boy, that ball was nearly intercepted and uh, may have been the result of that hit on the helmet Andy Bailey, who's 13 of 19 for the year, is on to attempt his 36-yard field goal. The pack of lead. Kick is up. And it's good. So Bailey in the rain from 36. Freshman out of Athens, Tennessee. Gives uh, Georgia a 10-0 lead. Now the SEC standings, Tennessee 7-1, and one, and Georgia two losses, one to Auburn and one to Tennessee. That was uh, here at Sanford Stadium, 19 to 15. I think back uh, on the Georgia season, they came off an unbelievable victory over LSU here and then uh, stubbed their toe big time against Tennessee. It was interesting because Tennessee came into that game here and nobody really gave them a chance and they uh, they really used that as a motivational tool and they'll have the same situation next week when they go to Atlanta to play over. Here's Katu and this one taken by LeBron Thomas number seven goes right and he gets out to the 22 yard line where he is tackled. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, Tracy Wolfson back with you at Sanford Stadium in the rain impressions of the first quarter. 
Well, I think that Georgia looks better than they did the last time we saw them against Auburn. They are the superior team, it appears, you know, physically in this ball game. They've outgained Georgia Tech 118 to 45 in that first quarter. I think for Georgia Tech, their defense is doing okay, but they've got to get some help from their offense. Reggie Ball needs to hit some passes. They've got to get the ball again in the hands of their best players who are their wide receivers, and it's easier to throw on this Georgia team on first or second down than it is on third. Here's Ball, near side, Nate Curry. Number five uh, with the catch, and let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Thanks, Vern. Two more injuries to report on the Georgia sideline. Wide receiver Fred Gibson has a bruised right hip. They're checking him out right now on the sideline. Running back Danny Ware has a right hand injury. He was taken to the locker room. He is back out right now, but he is out for now. I will bring you more information as soon as I get it. Okay, Tracy. Here comes Georgia Tech at the 31 yard line a second down and two total yards now 118 to 53. And P.J. Daniels number 45 he is on the field gets the handoff. And Daniels the oft injured tailback gets the carry and uh, looks like enough for the first down at the 34. You know what it looks like is it looks like Brian Van Gorder and the Georgia defensive staff was impressed with what Virginia did last week against Georgia Tech in the running game because they were the only team all season that held Georgia Tech under 100 yards rushing, held up to 86 yards. And what they did was they brought inside linebacker pressure a lot on early downs to stop the run. Now, Virginia plays a 3-4 defense. Most teams play a 4-3, a 4 defensive lineman front in college football, but still inside linebacker pressure for Georgia today. Saw the season stats for Daniels, and that was quite missing four games. And here's Ball rolling out. He'll keep it. And uh, runs out of bounds as Odell Thurman closes in on him. Well, this uh, Georgia team, two losses for the year. Here are the remaining undefeated teams so far. Southern Cal plays tonight, of course, and then they've got UCLA, Oklahoma, Auburn, Utah, and Boise State. And it's time for the Aflac trivia question. When was the last time at least five teams finished the season undefeated? And that includes postseason. So it seems an appropriate weather atmosphere to have the Aflac duck. Here's Daniels. Nice one. Sure was. You know, you can just tell he, he, he knows how to find the holes. And, uh, Georgia Tech is a different offense when P.J. Daniels is in the game and Reggie Ball is a different quarterback when P.J. Daniels is in the game. He makes them much better. Look at that. 307 yards and four touchdowns in the humanitarian bowl in Boise last year when they defeated Tulsa and it would appear that's where they're destined again this year. Not for sure but. Here goes Fred Gibson. Another senior. David Green has been in the locker room and now Gibson limping as he heads to the locker room. Third down. Yeah, short yardage situation. Gerald Anderson really blew it up. Number 92. This time it's a quarterback keeper. And uh, appears to have enough for the first down at the 45. Reggie I think, Ball. I think it was a good decision by Chan Gailey and offensive coordinator Patrick Nix. The last time on that fourth and one, they took the ball off the line of scrimmage. Here's Patrick Nix signaling in the place, former Auburn quarterback. And they gave it to uh, the tailback, and, and there was too much penetration to get the first down. That time they let the quarterback just take the snap and find a crease and get the conversion. First and 10, 10 nothing, Georgia. Play fake, ball rolling right. Looks downfield, drills it, caught at the 45 yard line by Calvin Johnson, number 21. And you got to remember, he still is very young. He's still a sophomore. A lot of people want to compare him to Joe Hamilton, who was, I think, the last great quarterback that Georgia Tech had. Joe Hamilton started for four years, and it really it's wasn't until the end of his sophomore year that he really stepped it up and, uh, you know, showed that steady progress. See the measurement just short of the first down at the uh, 45 yard line. Here's uh, the comparison to Ball and Hamilton. Hamilton runner up in the Heisman voting. And this is as sophomores now. Joe Hamilton with 66% completion and seven interceptions. And 17 for Reggie Ball. That's number two in the NCAA Division I rankings yeah. this year. 
Second and inches. It's been one of those things where when he makes mistakes, they've been pretty glaring mistakes, and it's overshadowed a lot of the good things that he's done in this his second year as a starter. Bubble play fake after the uh, fumble snap, and he throws it away. Jim Jennings is the closest one there. And nice catch by somebody in the ring gear on the sideline. Well, here's what they did. Second down and inches, a chance to take a shot down the field to their great freshman, Calvin Johnson. But he bobbled the snap. Oh, that's a, <laughs> I'm not sure what that fake is, but Georgia didn't buy it. They, they didn't get any kind of mesh with the back to sell the fake, but Calvin Johnson was a one-man route, and he was not open. He'll probably go quarterback sneak again here. For the first down. Third and inches at the 45. They do. And they go. And that's the right place to go, too. I mean, there was a little bit of a gap just to the right of the center. And Reggie Ball alertly saw that. If he'd have tried to go straight ahead or to the left of the center, it might have been a little difficult. Chan Gailey's team four and four again this year for the Yellow Jackets in the ACC. Virginia Tech six and one. Just one. Georgia Tech four and four in the league for four consecutive years. I mean, uh, the good news is they've been 500 or better for 10 straight, but that four and four for four years, a little bit too mediocre for some Tech fans. Here comes the blitz. Oh, boy. Derek White, number 53. Had a clean shot. Flags are down. Unimpeded. Well, and again, the reason that this is so effective is they're anticipating run and they're timing the blitz because they're timing Reggie Ball snap count. Unsportsmanlike against Georgia. I think because Derek White's helmet came off at the end of that play. But watch, here's Derek White. He's going to hit this thing full speed because they're anticipating the snap count correctly. See, you have no chance to block a guy if he gets a full head of steam on a blitz. That's why as a quarterback, you've got to, see, he took his helmet off. Yep. And that's the celebration, unsportsmanlike. Well, he'll hear about that mm -hmm. when he gets to the bench. Basically wipes out a great play, man. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 53 on the defense. Remove his helmet. 15 yards. Second down. Now you saw Mark Rick come out. Wants to have a little chat. The ACC officiating crew, but that's a no-brainer there. Sure it is. He takes his helmet off. And sure it is. Excessive celebration, unsportsmanlike penalty, and now uh, instead of the loss yardage, it's second and very short again for Georgia Tech. From inside, and here's the quarterback keeper again, Reggie Ball. All right, thank you, Tim. It looks a little nicer in Tulsa this mm -hmm. afternoon than it does here in Athens, Georgia. First down and 10, Georgia Tech. Reggie Ball hurried six times tonight. He's got plenty of time on this one, and that one off on it. Intended for Calvin Johnson. And he immediately goes to the towel. He <laughs> rips the towel out of his pants to dry his hands off. Now he goes to get a new towel. That one's wet. I need a dry towel and a better grip on the ball because that one really sailed on it. I like that they're throwing on first down, though, because that, I think that's where they're going to have their best opportunity to get the ball in the hands of their best players. Third down against this Georgia defense or this Georgia Tech defense. Very difficult to throw the football. Second and ten. Twelfth play of this drive. Push it out, push. And off to Daniels. He spilled after a game of three at the 30-yard line. David Pollock, number 47, was there to, to make the stop. P.J. Daniels, uh, we saw what he did in that bowl game last year out in Boise, but for the season last year, 1,447 yards, the second best ever. For a Georgia Tech running back, this had an outstanding year last year and then has just had trouble staying healthy in this his junior season. But he really makes a difference when he's in the lineup for Georgia Tech. Most recently had arthroscopic knee surgery on the 9th of November. Third and eight. Georgia looks like they're lined up offside. 
That guy down right here in the bottom looks like he's lined up offside for me. That guy is David Pollock. There's no play. There's Odell Thurman. And he turned him upside down. See, this is the problem. Third down is going to be tough against this Georgia defense. I think they're stronger and quicker than the guys up front for Georgia Tech. Take a look. David Pollock, he's got his eyes right on the ball, so he knows where he's got to be. Quarterback draw and just too much penetration, and Odell Thurman concentrating on the quarterback all the way. Fourth down. No field goal attempt. They'll go for the first down. And now time has been called by Georgia. Georgia. That's their second. Yeah, that was called from the sideline by the Georgia coaches. Time called here. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC on CBS. We'll continue after this word from your local station. Yes, it oh, is, Tim. Let me see if I understand that. Oh, never mind. Let's talk about what's going on here instead of the BCS for a moment. There's David Pollock, senior from Snellville. It's fourth down and eight. Ball on the Georgia 31. I think under dry conditions, Georgia Tech would opt for a field goal here. Travis Bell has kicked a 47-yarder early in the year, but because of the weather, they're forced to go for it. They don't want to take the chance of a snap. Calvin Johnson now goes into the slot. His ball. He's going the right side deep for Nate Curry and overthrows him by a good 10 yards. There's a flag down, though. And yes, it there might is. be roughing the quarterback. Thurman might have gotten there. Oh, holding. Oh, holding. Look at Brian Van Gorder. Ha! Last year's Frank Royals assistant coach of the year talked with us yesterday about the absence of chemistry on this uh, defensive unit, particularly when Thomas Davis went out. Yeah, they had played really good defense up to that point. And when he went out, uh, not only is it hard to replace a great player, but from, like you mentioned, from a chemistry standpoint, they've been kind of floundering here for a couple weeks. Playing pretty solid in the ball game so far today. Time gone, Georgia has the ball. Senior day in Athens, David Pollock gets a rest, a small irony. That touchdown pass went from that man, David Green, who has a, uh, a sprained thumb, to Fred Gibson, the other senior who uh, last we heard was in the locker room with a hip pointer. First down and 10. Shot he remains in, hands it off to Thomas Brown. Nice bit of running out of the 40. Yes, it was. I mean, Georgia Tech had that hemmed in, and Thomas Brown just made some folks miss. This, I think, is what makes this young back pretty special. Thomas Brown is able to uh, to make people miss in the box. Even though there's extra defenders in there, watch him just step around people. A little juke, even on a wet field, you see defenders slipping, but Thomas Brown, because he's moving forward, able to keep his balance very well. Game nine, second down and one, a 10 nothing game. 7.35 to go. Here's Brown, slips through right tackle, and is out to the 43. Well, it is time for the answer to the Aflac trivia question of the week. The last time at least five teams finished the season undefeated, what year was it? 1973. Mm. Six. This is uh, all the way through the season, bowl games included. Irish, Buckeyes, Sooners, Knits, Wolverines. Of course, we don't have ties anymore. Right. You know, with the overtime, so it's a little bit different this year. Play uh, fake, reverse, Reggie Brown, number one. Great athlete and a pretty good job by Kenny Scott staying home number two and uh, preventing Brown from getting loose with that great speed he has. Well, it's just good to see Reggie Brown back on the field. Uh, I enjoyed our visit with him yesterday at the football building. Uh, the concussion in the Auburn game, he didn't practice at all during the, the open week. And had they played the next week, obviously he wouldn't have been able to play. But he was able to rest that whole week. He started practicing again this week. He's, as you mentioned, a tremendous athlete, a very strong guy. And has able to, been able to bounce back from that big hit in the Auburn game and then be able to get on the senior day. Play fake, Shockley holding, Wang, so uh, DJ Shockley gets loose around the right side, but this one's coming back. 
Reggie Brown, Carrollton, Georgia, said it came down to Georgia or Ohio State when he was trying to make a, a decision as to where he would play. Had to sit out the 2001 season, torn ACL. Been a significant part of this uh, wonderful four-year run, though, for the senior class. After the holding call, second down, he'll shock him back. He's in trouble, gets rid of it, almost picked off. Whoa, James Butler was there. You know, Georgia Tech is still going to, they're not going to change their personality with Shockley in the game. They're still going to pressure, but they've got to be under control when they pressure this guy because if he takes off and gets outside of the contain as a runner, he can make some big plays. That time he tried to stay in the pocket and force the throw. Very lucky it wasn't intercepted. DJ Shockley, he's had his share of disappointments in his career here, and Mark Rick was telling us they had the quarterback meeting the day before Thanksgiving. And he asked each of his young men what they were thankful for most. And D.J. Shockley said for uh, the opportunity to grow as a man and deal with the disappointments he's had. Here's Shockley going deep right side. He's got Bailey open. Bailey's got it. Oh, he got two yards behind Butler. And they did the same thing that they hit Leonard Pope on on a third down and long situation. Knowing that Georgia Tech likes to blitz, they went into the I formation and went maximum protection. They're going to keep both backs in the block with these five linemen. They go take off here. The tight end goes out and the wide receiver goes out. And they block with everybody else. Block all the pressure and then take a shot down the field. And Bailey ran by the corner and Shockley able to get the football out there past Kenny, Co Kenny Scott. 53 yard gain, longest pass catch for Bailey in his career, longest pass completion this season for Shockley. Here's Thomas Brown inside the five to the three. Very interesting strategy for Mark Rick and the Georgia offense because they told us yesterday the thing about this Georgia Tech defense is they get people in third down and 11 plus more than anybody that we face. And that's uh, it's Jeremy Thomas down on the field at the end of that play. But that's that's where they have been effective is getting people in third down and 11 plus. Well, Georgia, both of their big plays in the passing game today have come in third down and long yardage in both times. They've gone to maximum protection and thrown one on one routes. Jeremy Thomas, who began his collegiate career at the Air Force Academy, played there on the junior varsity, decided to transfer, sat out, walked on at Georgia and was awarded the scholarship. He is one of the eight scholarship seniors. I'm not sure he appreciates that route right now. Not thinking about it. Boy, he took a, a blow to the it's cheek a, or the forehead. It's been a tough afternoon for the seniors here yes. at Georgia so far. David Green, Fred Gibson, Jeremy Thomas. It's second and goal. And Des Williams, number 35, is the fullback now. Sophomore from Decula, Georgia. Shockley, quick setup, right side, Reggie Brown, touchdown, Georgia. Well, I think Georgia Tech's defense was thinking run all the way there with first and goal. Another good call from the Georgia sideline because Reuben Houston, he never knew where the football was. Fourth touchdown toss of the season for D.J. Shockley. Reggie Brown makes the grab, and Andy Bailey is on for the extra point. Lee Jackson will hold it. Brian Jordan snaps it back. Doink. Now that is his first missed extra point of the season. Andy Bailey, the only scholarship kicker that Mark Richt has ever signed. Hmm. Ugly. Mm -hmm. So it is 16 to nothing. Shockley finds Brown for the touchdown. And the Bulldogs lead it 16 to zip in Athens. Mark Richt and his bunch on top by 16, trying to win their ninth of the year. As uh, they try and win their fourth in succession against Georgia Tech.
Now there's the human ugly. Well, not not ugly, but, but the human mascot. Haven't seen ugly. We have the human ugly down in our truck. We do. In truck in truck two. Where is ugly? Ugga might be in the lean-to with uh, Tracy. <laughs> Must have left the house and went into the uh, bigger lean-to. Trying to keep dry. Here's Katu to kick off. LeVon Thomas is deep. Short. Thomas at the 11th. Missed the open field tackle. Brandon Miller is down number 12 to get a second effort at him. And let's go back to the touchdown toss from Shockley to Brown. Well, it's man-to-man -man coverage, and so Brown is going to start off and show fade. That means Reuben Houston is going to keep his eyes on the receiver and go with them. But this is an intentional underthrow because at the last minute, Reggie Brown is just going to kind of fade back to the sideline, and D.J. Shockley knows right where to throw it. Sell the fade and then intentionally throw it short, and the defender has no chance. Sell the fade, come back to the ball. Houston never knew where the ball was. And that was very well executed. And it's first down and 10 now for Reggie Ball and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. He goes deep left side for Calvin Johnson, and it's incomplete. The coverage provided by Demario Minter, number two. Johnson, just an enormously talented wide receiver. Yeah, a 6'4", he's 225 pounds, and he has great speed. He ran a 4-3 in camp, but he just doesn't bring this one in. This is a good throw, and he had Minter beat, and the normally sure-handed Calvin Johnson not able to bring that one in. I saw him before the game with Buddy Geist, the wide receiver coach. All the other receivers were running just little fade routes, kind of warm-up routes. Buddy Geist had him about 10 yards away throwing bullets at him, and he was snagging everything, but that was before the rain started. There's Johnson in motion. They fake the reverse, and the handoff goes to P.J. Daniels, who is cut down almost immediately. It'll be third and long. Odell Thurman. Now, let's, uh, a touchdown. Here's Mark Rick and D.J. Shockley. Ah, uh, great. I mean, you know, D.J. Shockley, the way he has handled the situation with David Green, those two guys, I mean, that, that's been a, a big key to the Georgia success over the last three years as well. Those two guys handling the quarterback situation the way Mark Rick wanted them to. Third and nine. There's Ball. Moves out to his left, pulls up, he's in trouble. Guess who's going to get that one? <laughs> Guess who's going to get that one? Trying to become the first three-time All-American at Georgia since a guy named Herschel. I think he's a lock for that. The guy who was tied for first in the SEC with seven and a half sacks maybe just jumped into first place now with eight and a half. They tried to move Reggie Ball to put him in a different position, but as soon as he started going back and forth. David Pollock never, ever gives up on a play. David Green getting an early trip to the locker room, looks back. Here's the punt by Arndt. And it ain't. That's a fair catch at the 49. Among other things, David Pollock. And there is a flag down. David Pollock has now tied Reggie White of mm -hmm. Tennessee on the list of all-time career sack leaders in the SEC. Holding. Georgia. Well, the where this one was thrown, it might have been holding on one of the outside gunners because this was thrown from the sideline. Holding number 23 on the receiving team during the kick. It's a post coming kick foul, 10 yards from the end of the kick, first down. That's on Tim Jennings, the cornerback. Still pretty good field position for Georgia. Not as good as it would have been, but D.J. Shockley, after that impressive touchdown drive, the big completion on third down, and then the touchdown on first and goal, back on the field. And there are a few of the Hardy and the Brave who are sitting through this rainstorm. They sold all the seats here, but uh, not all the seats have been filled. Tonight it's uh, a raw, nasty night. First down and ten. Shockley as David Green has gone to the locker room. And they got him. Reese was there, number 18, Chris Reese, with his eighth sack yeah. of the season. 
Yeah, this is a guy who played safety for the last two years. They moved him to outside linebacker this year. He's not a real big linebacker, 6'1", 219 pounds, but good speed. And he knows how to get to the quarterback. As you mentioned, his eighth sack on the season. Junior out of Roswell, Georgia. Of course, you know his nickname. The Torpedo. <laughs> Max Team Gillis getting into his stance at last loss of seven at second down and 17. Shockley with pressure that uh, results in a one hopper at the feet of Leonard Pope. And it was Reese again. And, and again, Georgia resorting to the max protection type scheme, but Chris Reese able to get in there and disrupt that play as well. Mark Rick. Fourth season, came here from Florida State. Offensive coordinator under Bobby Bowden. Had 40 people at his home for Thanksgiving dinner, 4-0. Now, if I was John Tenuta here, I would not blitz on this third and one. I would play zone defense and force the under, underneath throw because the last two third and longs, Shockley's burned them. Hand off, they keep it on the ground, and Good Georgia defense. will punt. Yep. That was a great series by Chris Reese. He was in, involved in all three plays. Time call Georgia Tech with 2.31 to go. That is the first of their three. Chan Gailey grew up in America's Georgia. Quarterback in Florida back in the 70s and a one-time head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Thank you, Trey. 16-0. David Pollock got the sack earlier. David Green threw a touchdown earlier. He's in the locker room. Small note, they were born three days apart. David Pollock, June 19th, 1982, in New Jersey. David Green, June 22nd, 1982, here in Georgia. Gordon Ely Kelso on to punt. This one hangs up. And uh, Patrick Clark says, I'm going to get away from it. It'll bounce out of bounds. Patrick Carter, that is. And Ely Kelso comes to the near side. Well, the uh, list of awards, postseason awards. The finalists have been posted for a number of them now. David Pollock, a final for the uh, Bednarik, the Nagurski, the Lombardi Award, and the Lot Award semifinalist, David Green. Johnny Unitas Golden Arm finalist and the Max Word, Maxwell Award semifinalist. Here's Pollock, one sack in the ballgame. Handoff goes to Chris Woods, number 24. You, you can't bounce and dance against this Georgia defense. Uh, now, there's some pretty good defenses in the ACC, especially now with Miami and Virginia Tech being in and Florida State. But this is a fast SEC defense. And when you start trying to bounce things outside, you're not going to get anywhere. you got to go straight ahead against these kind of defenses. There's Barry with a keeper. After the fake, he goes right, and Tim Jennings is there to force him out of bounds. It'll be third down. That's next week. Third and seven here. Ball comes to the near side. Calvin Johnson has the grab. And he's tackled immediately at the 45-yard line. That is good for a first down. And there you saw the excellent hands by this big young receiver. His third catch of the ball game at a much-needed time, working on Demario Minter, a size mismatch, and then he goes up and snags it with those hands for the big first down. Calvin Johnson that came down to a choice of Georgia, Georgia Tech. He opted to stay Georgia Tech. And that's in the cell. It's under picked off out of bounds. Tim Jennings, number 23. Yeah, Reggie Ball should be happy he threw such an ugly pass on this one because this one took off on him and uh, threw it out of bounds. And good for him. It wasn't intercepted. Jennings in good position to make a play on the ball, but you see that foot comes down out of bounds. That one uh, sounded or uh, looked a little bit like a certain duck we know. Mm. Georgia Tech, six possessions, punt, punt, downs, downs, and punt. Well, under 80 yards of offense here in the first half, too. Georgia has really shut them down. His ball forced into the run. Demario Minter comes up to make the tackle at the 48-and-a-half yard line. That'll be short of the first down. 
with 117 to go. They do have two timeouts left. Reggie Ball looks like he's banged up. And he's calling a timeout because he's a little banged up, I think. He's coming off holding his right hand. Or We've already seen David Green lead the game with a left thumb. We might see Reggie Ball have to do the same thing. I don't know. It could have been an elbow. It could have been a shoulder. He looks to be okay on the sideline. He's putting his play wristband back on. That's a good sign. That means he's probably going to come back in. As it is, though, Demarius Bilbo is in. Bilbo this year has been playing at wide receiver. He was a quarterback in 2002 before moving out to the wideout position the last two years. So we may be seeing his first throw of the year, 35. Or, or we may see a quarterback draw. Here comes the blitz, Odell Thurman, Bilbo right side, incomplete. A nice throw. That's tough on a cold, wet day to come off the sidelines and uh, come into a third down and four situation. Let's see a ball uh, comes back out. Now they're going to punt. Well, they've gone for two fourth down situations and have failed both times. So this time they want to prevent anything bad from happening here right before the half and kick the ball away. And George has not uh, not got a return man on the field. And Thomas Davis, uh, they don't have the right personnel on the field. Here's the punt. There's nobody back. There were 10 men on the field for Georgia. As Thomas Davis had come off, and this one will limp to a, a rest at the six-yard line. Georgia tried to call a timeout right there on the sideline when Thomas Davis was coming off the field, but the referee had already started the action and wouldn't give it to him. <laughs> that was special. That, was. That, that, well, that looked like a men among boys right there. Well, mm -hmm. that whole family is special. Archie and Olivia, Peyton, Eli, and Cooper. That is, uh, I think, without question, the first family of football. 16 nothing. You know, I hope that uh, Mark Rick doesn't have the heat turned up in the locker room because on a day like this, if it's too warm in there, boy, you're not in a big hurry to run back out. Keep it, keep that air conditioner on there so they don't feel much different. They will change their shirts though. The underneath shirts, they'll put some dry stuff on. Well, on a soggy Saturday in Georgia, this one is very reminiscent of an old Brooke Benton tune. It's a rainy night in Georgia. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you'd break into song. I know the song. I just didn't know the artist. You threw me again, my man. Well, I got you by a few years. Back at Sanford Stadium on the campus of the University of Georgia, 16-0. The Bulldogs lead the Yellow Jackets in this 97th battle. And uh, midway through the first half, this was David Green back to throw an attempted screen pass. His left thumb appeared to make contact with the helmet of Michael Hall, K. Michael Hall. And this was a moment ago, David Green back on the field after the uh, intermission. And Tracy Wolfson just spoke with Mark Richt. Tracy? Coach, can you give us an update on David Green? Uh, I think he's got a little crack in his thumb, and uh, he won't play the rest of the day. They feel like he's got a real good shot at coming back for the bowl, but right now he's just got a little crack there. Danny, uh, Danny won't play again either today. Really? How disappointed is Green right now? Well, he's disappointed, but he's happy for DJ. He's happy for the, uh, for the team to be in the lead right now, I'm, I'm sure. Thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, thank you, Trace. David Green on the sideline. Todd, you're just telling me that uh, you had a similar injury. Well, yeah, mine was actually, I dislocated mine doing the same thing, hit it on a helmet, and I actually had to get surgery. The fact that it's broken might even be better for David Green. As Mark Rick said, good chance that he could be back for the bowl game with the crack. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those injuries. If it's any other position, a cracked thumb really doesn't mean that much. But for a quarterback, if it's your throwing thumb, it's a very serious injury. So we will see DJ Shockley after the kickoff. Here's Kyle Belcher with the kick. And this will be taken by Tyson Browning at the goal line, near side, out to the 19-yard uh, line where he is stopped. Well, a really tough way for 
David Green's career at Sanford Stadium to end. But uh, what, tell us a little bit about D.J. Shockley and what you thought of him in the first half. Well, I thought he played very well. You know, it's a wet conditions. He wasn't knowing how much he was going to play when the game started. And when they got their touchdown with him in there, you know, that was a critical possession. You didn't know whether David Green was going to come back in the game or not. It wasn't just his normal, you know, one series in the first half. It was his second series. And he made some nice plays when he's in there. So this is a great opportunity for D.J. Shockley to run the show and to uh, just keep improving as a quarterback here for the Georgia Bulldogs. Hand off on the draw play. And that's Thomas Brown. D.J. Shockley, the junior from College Park, now near the uh, Atlanta airport, 3 of 7, 91 yards, had the big pass of 53 to Sean Bailey, and the touchdown toss of 3 yards to the senior Reggie Brown. Well, that's an encouraging sight, though it is still raining, and... Uh, I think roughly half of those who were here are not anymore. Second down and five. You see a lot of empty seats. Second and five. And then that's going to be motion on the right side. Flag down. Let's uh, take a look at the halftime stats presented by the Hartford. We'll take a look at the total yards. Georgia Tech only 82 total yards in that first half and no big plays. You know, Georgia had a couple big plays on third and long, a couple big pass plays. The longest or best play that Georgia Tech had in the first half was a 13-yard pass completion. So for them to get back in this ball game, when they get the ball on offense, they've got to get some big plays with their big play receivers. Second and 10 after the penalty ball back at the 20-yard line. Two wide outs to the left, one wide right, oh, another motion again. Ball. And I think that's Leonard Pope again. See, one of the things when you're going on a little bit of a longer snap count, which the last two plays DJ Shockley has done, you get all that snap, movement. Strike, number 72 on the offense, five yards, still Daniel second Lincoln, down. Not Pope. You get all that movement that Georgia Tech likes to, to bring, not just blitzes and pressures, but they also do a lot of stunting and looping with their down linemen and uh, a little over anxious there on two plays in a row for the Georgia front. Second and 15. Blitz again. Shockley forced out to his left. Goes deep. Man coverage. Can he stop defending? John Bailey slips and falls as he tried to come back for the ball. See, we call a blitz on that play, but it's it's really just a fifth guy rushing. There's four defensive linemen, and then they're bringing one extra guy, Chris Reese. But technically, that is considered a blitz. And that's what Georgia Tech does. Now, they'll bring at least five most of the time. Here's one, two, three, four, and here comes Chris Reese blitzing from the edge. They don't always play man coverage with that. A lot of times they play zone behind it, but they're normally going to bring at least five on a rush. Third and 15. Now they back one out. There's the adjustment defensively again. They bring four. And it's a handoff to Thomas Brown. You heard uh, Mark Rick tell Tracy that Danny Ware was through for the day. So Brown will get the majority of the runs, and, and, uh, and Hawaii makes the tackle. Fourth and 15. Take a look at what they do. They, they bring people from a lot of different directions. And when we talked to David Green and Mark Rigg, they say, hey, if you think LSU blitzes a lot, you should see these guys. LSU, it's over 50%. These guys, it's close to 70%, whether it's a running or a passing situation. Gordon Ely Kelso back uh, near the goal line. This one, Patrick Clark runs up, takes it on the run, trips and falls. He's down at the 43, but Georgia Tech with excellent field position to uh, start this third quarter on offense. 16 to nothing. Rain has subsided, but has not yet quit raining. Reggie Ball with a smile despite not being on the field, injured. In the uh, latter stages of the second quarter, 6 of 14. And uh, Demarius Bilbo is in the huddle. Number eight. 
David Pollock urging the, those who remain to get a little noisy. Well, most of Bilbo's work came in 2002. He's been a wide receiver for the most part since then, but he does have a good arm. I was watching him in warm-ups before the game. Here's good protection. He goes right. He's completed his first pass this year, and he goes to Calvin Johnson, number 21. See, I, I think what Georgia Tech needs to do, whoever's in there at quarterback, the strength of the team is the wide receivers. I think that if, if the Georgia corners play off and give you some cushion, I think you need to just raise up and throw quickly outside to those guys on a wet field and see if they can make somebody miss and get a big play. Again, 13 yards was the biggest play that they had in that first half. They've got to get some bigger chunks of yardage to get back into this football game. That was enough for a first down. They brought the chain out and measured, and Calvin Johnson picked up the first down. Now, Bilbo is, is built a little bit differently than Reggie Ball. Ball 5'11", 195. Bilbo is 6'3", 225 pounds. So a bigger quarterback may be able to see over the defense a little differently than Ball. Good protection this time. Comes left side for Nate Curry. The tackle missed, but it did knock him down as Demario Mitter makes the stop at the 23. Marius Bilbo. Out of Mississippi, he's a Mississippi High School Player of the Year. He's a junior from Moss Point, Mississippi. Baseball player drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers as a high schooler. And as Todd said, he threw for three touchdowns in 2002 before making the change to wide receiver. Here's the handoff left side. It goes to uh, P.J. Daniels, and that gives us a moment. Now that's one of the great stories in college football, I think. Uh, I think what Gary Barnett was able to, to rally his troops to do in Colorado and Mike Price with a second chance at UTEP, outstanding. First down and 10 here at the 20-yard line is Bilbo going deep left side. In the end zone, Levon Thomas, there's uh, incidental contact, but no flag, and the official was two yards away. Now this uh, Georgia team shut out in the first half. You can see... On their possessions, four punts, and twice they lost it on downs. Yeah. Didn't do a very good job on third down to keep the ball. And one of the things that Georgia has tried hard to do is to not let Calvin Johnson beat them on a go route. They are really running to take away the deep route, which means I think you can throw in front of them. Look at that cushion in front of 21. Bill ball looks that way, fires it one hopper behind Calvin Johnson. And uh, we saw Reggie Ball standing next to Jan Gailey, let's get an update. Here's Tracy. Thanks, Vern. Reggie Ball has a bruised elbow, but he is clear to go back in. It's just a coach's decision to go with Bilbo instead. This is where the injury occurred. That uh, came on that tackle. Latter stages, second quarter. Well, and the good news for Reggie Ball is he fell on his left elbow, and he's a right-handed quarterback. So it's not his throwing arm that he injured. A little hip-hop on the Georgia sideline. Third down. Bilbo, good pass protection in the end zone, and he had a man yes, wide he open. Did. Levon Thomas was open by five yards. Well, that's two passes in this drive where just a little nervous energy maybe out of Bilbo that he overthrew. One was the takeoff route down the left sideline, and this one, as you mentioned it, Thomas was open in the middle. And this would have been an easy touchdown for Georgia Tech if Bilbo gets that ball down a little bit. 37-yard field goal for the, free, uh, the uh, freshman, Travis Bell. He has hit his last 13 in a row. He missed from 46 in the season opener. Everything has been perfect since, including this one. And the Yellow Jackets are on the board. Travis Bell, a walk-on, a non-scholarship kicker but they could have had the touchdown. At Sanford Stadium in Athens, 16 to three, Georgia. Rain just about uh, over here in Athens, Georgia, 16 to three. Tech gets on the board with the field goal. Demarius Bilbo missed the touchdown, yep. but gave him a little spark. He sure did. You know, the defense started it with a good three and out. A couple penalties by Georgia helped the cause, and then Bilbo came in and hit a couple throws and, and did give him a spark. And, uh, to get on the scoreboard, 
You know, it's, it's still, I mean, it's only a 13 point lead, so it's not like they're completely uh, blown out of the water here. Kyle Belcher will kick off, Browning and McClendon are the deep men. This one is uh, fairly short. It'll be McClendon at the five yard line. Brian McClendon comes right. Sure was. Georgia. And there uh -oh. is a fumble. Yes, there he is. And a different bounce on the Georgia Tech sideline. Gary Guyton recovered it. Brian McClendon fumbled it. Careless work by McClendon as you see him get ready to get hit. They hit right on the football. Number 88. Who Chris Dunlap with the hit. Guyton comes up with the recovery. And that's a that's a good call. That ball was out before he was down in Georgia Tech. And Demarius Bilbo right back in business. Jonathan Jackson, number 32, was also there. Reggie Ball is back in. Here's Reggie Ball rolling right. Gets a good block. Fires it in the end zone. Tick. Incomplete, almost gathered in on the rebound. LeVon Thomas was the intended receiver. DeMario Minter was the defender. And here's the irony of this. DeMario Minter is from the same high school as the quarterback, Reggie Ball. They both played at Stevenson High School, and that ball was underthrown by Reggie Ball. If he throws that out in front of Calvin Johnson, he has a touchdown. But because it was thrown under the receiver, Minter was able to recover and knock the ball away. Getting the turnover, fairly rare occurrence for Georgia Tech this year. They were minus 14. Giveaway, takeaway coming into this game, but they get that one in the fumble recovery. Flag, dead ball. Well, and getting interceptions, very rare for Georgia. Only five, the fewest of any team in the SEC. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 74 on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Leon Robinson just a moment ago, the missed opportunity. Well, this, this was, was Bilbo. Yeah, this was the third down play. And the middle of the field is what's open against cover two. Those safeties split and defend the outside. You get somebody streaking down the middle in the overthrow. They were able to get three points. But when you're a team like Georgia Tech, who has been inconsistent and up and down, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity you get. Now, they just got another opportunity with the turnover. They must capitalize. Comes the blitz, left side, contact, no flag. Tim Jennings, the defender. And it'll be third down and 15. I'm just wondering if Chan Gailey just wanted Reggie Ball to just watch that first possession. I mean, clearly he's the quarterback. He's been there the whole year, and it wasn't like he played poorly in the first half. Bilbo gave him the spark, but now with the turnover, ball back on the field, but a very difficult situation here with third and 15. Johnson winds up outside. Now he's in motion, sets up in the slot, play fake. Ball being chased by Pollock, pulls up and lets it go into the end zone. There's contact with Greg Blue and the wide receiver, LeVon Thomas. Reggie Ball says, my gosh, there is a flag back at the 27-yard line. And Blue and LeVon Thomas are having a brief chat. No, oh, they're calling a personal foul on Georgia. David Pollock, who was the guy that forced Reggie Ball out of the pocket. You don't normally see David Pollock make this kind of a mistake. I mean, he's a relentless player, and he never gives up on a play. Personal foul, number 94. Yeah, it wasn't on the yet. defense, half a distance to the goal, automatic. First That's down. Moses. You know, this had to be away from the play because I, it wasn't where the quarterback was, I don't think. On the right side of the screen. See, there was nothing around the quarterback. Right here at the end of the play, Quentin Moses, there, there it was. It yeah, it was just the late shot at the end of the play, completely away from the action, and Brian Van Gorder is hot, and for good reason. And that gave Georgia Tech a new set of downs inside the 10-yard line. That's the eighth penalty on Georgia, first and goal from the nine. Ball, five-step drop, right side. 
caught by Nate Curry at the five yard line. They might give him forward progress at the three. It appears they will. Brian Van Gorder. That was a dangerous throw. <laughs> I mean, they were on the left hash, and he threw a little stop route all the way to the right sideline. Man, you see a little bit of the strength of Reggie Ball's arm on that play. Second and goal. See the quarterback throwing the ball better, both Bilbo and Reggie Ball. The rain looks like it has stopped completely here in Athens now. Dry conditions. There is Williams, the tight end, tight to the right side. They hand it off, B.J. Daniels bounces and is down at the one. Reggie Blue with the big hit. Now these two safeties for Georgia are probably the best tandem of safeties in college football. They are outstanding hitters, great run support guys. You don't see many safeties hit a running back with a full head of steam and make him go backwards like Greg Blue did right there. P.J. Daniels was headed to the goal line and then he got turned sideways right there by the hit by Greg Blue. Third and goal inside the one. He'll throw it. Lofts it for Calvin Johnson. That's, that That's a good game. call. Demario Minter was out there on an island with that big receiver. And Reggie Ball did a good thing. He threw the ball in a place to give Calvin Johnson a chance. And this will be a first down now for Georgia Tech. Johnson again, six foot four, 225 pounds. De Demario Minter's six foot, and he's got a hold of the jersey. But the ball was not thrown. You know, the only thing that could have hurt him there is if it was thrown completely out of the play. He kept it in the field of play, and Calvin Johnson drew the penalty. First and goal, 16 to 13, 8.39 to go, third quarter. <laughs> we watched that Texas, Texas A&M game yesterday. Don't go for a quarterback sneak and stick that ball over the goal line. Here's the handoff, Daniels, got him. Great penetration. Now they're running. And the ball it's marked down, but they lost yardage. Yes. I think Darius Swain, number 98, is the guy who made the penetration. And Odell Thurman also there, number 33. Watch the push on the right side. Of course, Pollock is in there, too. Odell Thurman dove over the top. Jarvis Jackson with good penetration, number 45. And P.J. Daniels, I mean, he just had to come to a dead stop before he got to the goal line. Lost the yard. No swing. Number 98. It's going to be tough to run inside on these guys. They might have to fake it and keep the ball in the hands of Reggie Ball here. Second and goal. Play fake. Ball under pressure. Lobs it out. Incomplete. Third and goal. I don't think a field goal is good here at all for Georgia Tech. After that penalty and they got first and goal, they have got to score a touchdown here. They've got the field position in their favor right now. They definitely need a touchdown. Still like the play fake? Well, I thought they might run a bootleg there. I mean, I think Georgia will be looking for play fake here on third down. Fade pattern, incomplete, flag, yeah, another one. That's another good call. Demario Mitter again. I mean, he pushed him the whole way. Thomas Davis arguing that it was an uncatchable pass, but uh, for a six foot four leaper, I don't think it was uncatchable. One on one. Throw it up and give him a chance. And uh, yeah, that was definitely a catchable pass if there's not contact. When that ball's in the air, you're not allowed to push on the receiver like Demario Minter did. And a fresh series of downs for Georgia Tech. Two penalties in the end zone on this series on number two, Demario Minter. And three penalties on third down for Georgia in this drive. Daniels, touchdown. Georgia Tech, it took a long time, but they get six. And they 
Duke and close to within six. Well, they got the penalties. They kept knocking on the door. And finally, P.J. Daniels over the left side, able to get it into the end zone. Six touchdown run. Here's the extra point. It's up and good. The sequence began with a fumble by McClendon on the kickoff. The other key play to give them first and goal was the personal foul on Quentin Moses. Then two penalties in the end zone. Daniels finally gets the Georgia Tech touchdown. Now you can see a lot of empty sits. The uh, rain chased many folks home at halftime. It was 16 nothing. But in this third quarter, Georgia Tech has climbed right back into it, and they now trail by six. Yeah, I hope wherever their people, those people went, that they turned on CBS because this game is going to get interesting. Well, Brian McClendon, who fumbled the last kickoff return, will not be back to return this one. Thomas Flowers has taken his spot. Kyle Belcher, number 16, will kick it off. That's Tyson Browning, number 31, to the left. And the other spot is Thomas Flowers, number 29. Thomas Flowers took over the punt returning job in the Vanderbilt game and has been an outstanding punt returner. Not normally accustomed to returning kickoffs, though. Browning at the goal line. Got a chance for a big one. Nice open field tackle by Jamal Lewis, number 17. Now, after the touchdown, here was David Pollock coming over, the senior from Snelling, Georgia. He looks down at Quentin Moses, who was flagged for the personal foul, and says, you've got to use your yeah. head. But you know what the good thing is as a leader, he didn't yell at him. You know, he didn't, he didn't make him look bad from his teammates. He just said, hey, be smart. You're smarter than that. Right now, the momentum is clearly on the Georgia Tech side. A, a great opportunity for quarterback D.J. Shockley to turn things around. He goes right to the first down and throws it behind Sean Bailey. And let's get more from Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. David Pollock didn't yell at him, but odds expected defensive coordinator Brian Van Gorder huddled up his defense and yelled at them. He said, we are a championship program. That is what losers do. He says, I like what your fight. I like your competitiveness out there. But he said, do anything stupid again, and you will pay the price. All right, Trace, thank you. Second down and 10. This is the fourth game this year with 10 or more. They went through a stretch. Here's Went through a mid-season stretch when they had 33 penalties in three games. Yeah. And they're in double digits again today. Well, and, and the thing to remember about that drive, three critical penalties all occurred on third down. You know, when they had them just about stopped. The personal foul, a defensive holding in the end zone, and a pass interference on the in the end zone, both by Demario Minter working on Calvin Johnson. So uh, the penalties, a big problem there for Georgia. Fred Gibson is out, hip pointer in the first quarter, the senior. Sean Bailey has taken his spot. He's wide to the left. Reggie Brown is wide right. Shockley dances left. He's in trouble, real trouble. I mean, serious trouble. Great defense by Georgia Tech. They brought five, but they played zone. And I think D.J. Shockley thought it was going to be man-to-man, -man, but it was a, a two-deep zone with a five-man rush. And once they got D.J. moving sideways, then they used their speed to track him down. And this defense of Georgia Tech, not overly big, but very quick. The sack there by Eric Henderson. His third of the season. And for the second time in the third quarter, it's three and out for Georgia. And on fourth and 28, Ely Kelso will punt from near the goal line. And Georgia Tech looks to maintain the edge and field position here unless something tra tragic happens to him. Patrick Carter has it at the 49-yard line to the 38-yard line. That's a 36-yard punt, 11 on the return. Mark Rick's team has a tenuous six-point lead. 
Demarius Bilbo back in at quarterback. Maybe they're going to alternate series here in the second half. On first down, here's Bilbo. Right side. Little behind that comeback pattern. Now let's go to the last possession of the sequence at the goal line, Todd. Well, they tried to run it in. They got stopped. Actually, lost yardage. And threw incomplete. Reggie Ball threw it away. Then on third down, this is where they got the uh, interference penalty. So they got new life on the goal line again. And first down, P.J. Daniels able to stick it in the end zone. But the penalties by Georgia really aided the Georgia Tech cause in that drive. Second and ten. Bilbo again to one hop the right side. And that, that, that's two completions or connections that they've got to make. Whether it's Demarius Bilbo or Reggie Ball, they've got to make those. You can see neither guy with very good numbers, but they've got open receivers. And, and the best players on this Georgia Tech offense are those wide receivers. But you've got to get them the football and let them do their thing. Tech is 9 of 26 passing between the two quarterbacks. Now you have Calvin Johnson working on a freshman, Paul Oliver, out there at the top of the screen. Comes the blitz, flag down, bring it back. The flag was thrown before the snap. Here's the call. By the snap, Paul Stark. Number 74 on the offense, five yards, still third down. Senior day in Stanford, in Sanford Stadium in Athens. And uh, we began this afternoon with a full house of 92,000. Rain chased a bunch of them away. David Green threw a touchdown toss to Fred Gibson. Second possession of the game. Both are out with injuries. Georgia led 16 to nothing at the half. It's been all Georgia Tech in the third quarter. They have a chance to take the lead on this possession, but they're looking at third and long here. And there's Bilbo caught and dropped at the 44-yard line. Quentin Moses, who was flagged for a personal foul that indirectly led to the last Georgia Tech touchdown, gets the sock here. And they got good pressure. Thomas Davis is coming. Moses comes. Holland comes from this side, and they really collapse the pocket quickly. They also brought outside Tim Jennings came and was unblocked. And a big third down stop by the Georgia defense. Arndt nails it. Great kick. Oh, it was it ever. Should be inside the 10, I would think. Comes the spot. It will be yep. at the 10. The nine and three quarters. I've always thought that to be a slightly inexact yeah, science. I think you're right. And David Green will not play again. Mark Rick telling Tracy Wilson. Whoa! Now this is, you know what this is? This is not an offside. DJ Shockley in the center thought they drew him offside, so they snapped the ball. Russ Tanner in there at center, but Georgia Tech was not offside. So now it's second down and 12 instead of uh, first down. And we saw David Green pull Georgia Tech offside a couple times early. Watch, there is movement, but they don't cross into the neutral zone and then they snapped it. DJ took a knee and uh, lost it down. Second down and 12. Shockley, there's a one hopper to Bailey. Georgia Tech has turned this game in their favor. I mean, there's no question. The Georgia Tech defense right now feels like they've got a beat on DJ Shockley and this Georgia offense. They have controlled the run. And now they are finding ways to get pressure on D.J. Shockley. And this third down and long, again, Mark Rick told us, if you look at their cut-up reels, third and 11 plus is the most plays. They force most people into that situation, and that's when they're really tough. Georgia on third and 12. Comes the pressure. Shockley fires it deep. That could be picked off. It's not the way Kenny Scott had both hands on it and cannot believe. The opportunity goes awry, intended for Sean Bailey. Well, I think the reason that Kenny Scott didn't come down with it is I think Sean Bailey may have got a hand in there to knock it away. Scott has it in his sights, and Bailey able to get his right hand in there just enough to make it a difficult, difficult catch for Kenny Scott. Third possession, third punt in this third quarter. It's fourth and 12. Ely Kelso on. Patrick Carter, and again, it's going to be 
terrific field position for Georgia Tech. That's a nice punt. It chases Carter back to the 44, but it is returnable. But not far. Great punt. Great punt and great coverage that time. There's Leonard Pope down there making the tackle on punt coverage. Forty-eight yard punt and six on the return. It's time now for the Argent Mortgage quarterback comparison. David Green's day is complete. How's he stack up for the season, Todd, against uh, Campbell and Leak? Well, I think he stacked up very well. I think all three of those guys had outstanding seasons. But if I had to pick who was the outstanding quarterback in the conference this year, it would be Jason Campbell. I think what he's done and the level that he's played at all season, plus his team undefeated. He's the best quarterback in the league this year. Reggie Ball back in. Calvin Jackson diving catch made it at the 43-yard line. Okay, Tim. Thank you. Second and two here. And uh, P.J. Daniels bounces into his own man. It'll be third down. Odell Thurman with penetration got right into the backfield and, and they've been able to do that against the Georgia Tech running game. They've been able to, to blitz inside linebackers and time the snap count and disrupt the timing of these running plays. That, that's about the third or fourth time Odell Thurman has been successful doing that today. Third and five. Late substitutions now. Brian Van Gorder. Now he's going to go with his... Speed rushers. He took his big gap eaters out, and now he's got Pollock, Quentin Moses, and Ray Gant in there, and Thomas Davis will also come up on the end of the line to rush the passer. Timeout is called by Georgia Tech. That's their first. So they will uh, chat things over. Chan Haley, Demarius Bilbo, Reggie Ball. Be right back. 2.20 to go, third quarter, third and five, 16 to 10, Georgia trying to hold off this Georgia Tech third quarter onslaught. It was 16-0 at the break. David Green out with an injury. Fred Gibson out offensively. Mark Richt trying to call on his uh, defensive troops right now. Come up with a big play on third and five, and Chan Gailey hoping that his bunch can get a first down and keep this drive going. From the 45. Here's Reggie Ball, and here comes the pressure. Ball scrambles. He's got the first down plus, and he's tackled by Jarvis Jackson at the 35-yard line. That's a gain of 10. Yeah, good decision by Reggie Ball. Now you want to throw it for the first down. It's not there. You're a good runner. Go ahead and get it that way. Any way you convert on third down, you'll take. Reggie Ball, who has run for nearly 500 yards this year, of course, he doesn't have a net 500 yards because of sacks yardage taken off, but he is an excellent runner from the quarterback position. First down and 10. 
movement by the tight end, George Cooper. Momentum killing penalties. Prior to the snap, false start. 83 on the offense. Five yards, still first down. Now they're going to tag Williams with this one. Darius Williams. Well, I think it was 80. Not I do too. <laughs> and so does Darius Williams. I think we just got a little correction also. <laughs> you can see it in the body language. Yeah. Darius Williams, what? Yeah. First and 15. Calvin Johnson breaks off wide to the right side. Ball at the 40. Play fake. Ball back. Rolling right. Looking at Johnson. Oh the way and it's behind him and incomplete now you're going to tell I'm going to tell you something as a quarterback I've been in some scary situations but I don't know that there could be a scarier situation than that right there Reggie ball rolling out throwing with Thomas Davis coming at you full speed and I mean, the Cal other end yeah Calvin Johnson running the route and he's open but Reggie ball had some problems of his own because uh, Thomas Davis was snorting coming at him like a like a charging bull. Speaking of. I'll get the sixth. He didn't let the rain deter him. Here's ball back. Here comes Davis. The ball is caught. That's the ball. Thomas. That's another first down. The 23. There's a fumble. And I think that Thomas is going to be ruled down before the ball came out. Game of 17. Well, Thomas was in the slot working on Tim Jennings. Here he is right here, and he runs the out route, and he's going to be open because the safeties go back to the middle. So it's one-on-one -on -one against Jennings, and he gets outside of him, and there's no help outside. And a nice job by Reggie Ball reading the coverage and finding the open receiver. You can see he was clearly in. I think he was down. Oh, Ball back. Right side. Pass completed. This was Nate Curry, number five. I bet Archie Manning's got a smile yeah, right now. Huh? Yeah, I'm sure he does. Of course, Timmy has to get a plug in for the uh, home state guy, the Louisiana <laughs> guy. Try to shoot well, Tim Brando. His ball. It's incomplete, almost picked off. As Derek White, number 53, made contact with the ball. And that's going to bring up third and ten. Boy, this one has been played from the 50 yes, on in this entire half. Not only has Georgia Tech dominated field position, they've dominated time of possession, they've dominated yardage. Georgia only third quarter minus 15 yards of offense. I mean, they have gone backwards, and Georgia Tech has kind of put the pedal to the metal on them here in the third quarter. Out of the shotgun, Reggie Ball. Looks like the quarterback draw all the way, and he's caught and dropped. That will bring up fourth down. And here comes the field goal unit on. So Travis Bell, the walk-on, who has made 14 consecutive field goals, will get an opportunity to add to that total and cut the margin in half, unless there is, of course, a fake. 40 yards for Bell. Chan Gailey peers in intently. Perfect. How about my man, the kicker? They had a little, uh, like the little salute, the kicker and the holder. Wasn't that cute? <laughs> oh, what a thundering round of applause that does from you. Well, Todd, you have the responsibility for replay, so <laughs> this one's all yours. Well, I love kickers, as you know, and uh, Travis Bell showed me a new little fake, the high five psych, <laughs> flip off the chin strap. I guess when you're uh, 15 for 16, you can get away with that. Oh, my dear. Georgia Tech, 16 to 13. And Kyle Belcher will kick off. Minus 15 yards of offense in this quarter. 
for this team in red. That's Tyson Browning. You know, it's, it's worth mentioning too with a 16-13 score and that missed extra point from Andy Bailey. Pretty big right now. Nice kick. Wow. That'll be a touchback come after the 20. Georgia with seven seconds to go in the third quarter. Still looking for their first first down. You know, as we watch DJ Shockley get ready to, to come back on the field, as you see what they had done prior to today in the third quarter, DJ Shockley has played in 25 games now in his career. He's never started a game, but I don't know that he's ever been in a situation like this where David Green is hurt where he's on the field, even though his team is leading, the momentum has slipped away from his football team. So this game, very much in question, is totally in his hands right now. He's 3 of 11 for 91 yards. He slipped the ball. The second man through Thomas Brown, he picks up one. And that is it for quarter number three. David Green cracked bone in his left thumb, his throwing hand. So his career at Sanford Stadium is complete. That's the end of three, 16 to 13. We'll return to Sanford Stadium after these messages and a word from your local station. David Green, but uh, the day hasn't evolved the way they might have hoped. David Green out with a cracked bone in his left thumb. David Pollock. His team has seen a lot more action on the field in this second half than they might have liked. We begin the fourth quarter with Georgia clinging to a 16 to 13 edge. 21 rushes for 21 yards in the ball game. Georgia Tech's defense has controlled this game from the first quarter on. Here's Shockley rolling out, fighting it. It's caught by Reggie Brown. He gets it out to the 25 yard line, and that'll bring up a third down and five. And there is. Uh, well, now they're, they're going to say he incomplete, yeah. right? That he didn't have control on another third down and long situation now for the Georgia Bulldogs. It looked like a pretty clean, easy throw and catch. They rolled Shockley out. It was a good throw. Oh, I think that's a, that's a catch. I think it's a catch too. He did bobble it, but I thought he caught it before he bobbled it. Nonetheless, the officials rule it incomplete, and it's third and ten instead of third and five. And as you have pointed out throughout the day, Georgia Tech has excelled in forcing them into third and one. Screen pass, no go. That's twice they've tried to throw a screen, and twice the screen has been well covered, and they're able to pressure the quarterback. You know, you expect pressure when you throw a screen. You let the line, let those guys come in. The pressure's going to come from the outside. Dewan Landry is the guy who's going to get the sack. But the only reason he gets the sack is because the screen was not open. And Shockley couldn't throw the football. Dewan Landry, his younger brother, Laron, is the starting safety for LSU. Two pretty good safeties in college football. Here's the punch of Ely Kelso. And again, great field position. And uh, Clark says, I'll pick it up on one hop. And he's going to be down at the 45-yard line. Here is a staggering number, I think. In this half, total yardage for Georgia, minus 30. Now Georgia Tech has the ball again at the 44-yard line. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia, up 16-13. David Green, it seems like he's had enough watching from the sidelines. He threw off his thumb brace. He picked up his helmet. And he's now throwing a football on the sidelines. He wants back in. Here's the thumb brace right now. We found it on the floor. He wants into the game. He's had enough watching this game get too close for him. Back to you, Vern. Fifth-year senior David Green, Todd. Well, the one thing, if he does come back in, they'll probably have to be in the shotgun almost exclusively. I think it'd be very difficult for him to take snaps under the center with a broken left thumb. In the meantime, he's got to uh, draw on his defensive teammates. Here's Bilbo, who's back in as the quarterback, and the pass is complete to LeVon Thomas. Well, again, these two safeties for Georgia, Greg Blue and Thomas Davis, are great hitters. They're great run defenders, and they love to make contact in the middle of the field. And when they hit you, you stop. You don't 
continue to go forward. You don't fall forward for positive yards when those two guys hit you. There's pressure from the right side. The pass is out and incomplete. And so it will be second down and 10. Georgia Tech, just an amazing stat that Georgia Tech has for the fifth consecutive time started the ball with the ball inside Georgia, Georgia end of the field. Well, and it really has started with their defense. From the time they came out of the locker room to start the third quarter, they got a three and out, and they've shut down Georgia's run completely. Only six yards rushing in the game now for Georgia. And the two teams that beat Georgia, Tennessee held them to 56, Auburn held them to 85. And off to Daniels, he gets to the 31-yard line. And that will bring up third down. I think the, the Georgia defense has responded here the last couple possessions. Even though they've had their backs to the wall field position wise, they have toughened up a little bit against this Georgia Tech offense. Third and eight. Brian Van Gorder signals in the defense he wants. Look at the fourth and the third quarters. Here's Bilbo. Comes the pressure. There's Pollock. He dove over P.J. Daniels, who tried to block him, and landed on top of Demarius Bilbo. I mean, <laughs> there are so few players in college football in any position that play the game the way this guy plays. Jumps around the back and lands on the quarterback. Now, why you have a tailback try to block David Pollock instead of an offensive lineman, I don't understand at all. That makes no sense to me. Out of field goal range, fourth and 15. Pollock has brought two punts this year, in addition to everything else. This one, end over end, it will bounce at the 22, go sideways, and come to a stop near the 11 yard line. And will we see David Green come back on the field with a cracked bone in his left thumb? In the meantime, say hello to a three-time All-American. I don't think there's any doubt. Back at Sanford Stadium, and as we were going to break this dramatic moment, Mark Rick, David Green, and DJ Shockley. Yeah, Mark Rick was telling David Green, no, I'm not going to put you back in. I know you've been warming up. I'm going to stay with Shock, and he's probably thinking of a couple things there. I mean, number one, he's thinking about David Green and his well-being and his future. He's also thinking about a bowl game about a month from now. And he's also thinking about this guy, DJ Shockley, and his future with him next year. What message would it send to DJ to take him out of the game right now? Lance is right. He's now missed his last seven passes. But he does not look good right now. He does not look comfortable running the offense. Time now for this week's Scholar Athlete presented by Red Lobster. He is on the sideline right now with a broken bone, a cracked bone in his left thumb. David Green, senior with a 3.2 grade point average, on course to get his degree in risk management and insurance, and he is the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame Scholar Athlete. We will see him in New York. And at the Hall of Fame banquet, here's Shockley coming left. Nobody there to help downfield. He's out of bounds with a loss again. Jarris Wilkinson, K. Michael Hall. Now, in the second half, Shockley, minus 5, minus 18, minus 2, and minus 15. And what Georgia Tech has just realized is, hey, we don't respect the Georgia running game at all anymore. And so we're going to come after the quarterback. We're not just going to play foolish man-to-man -man all the time on their wide receivers, but we are going to pressure D.J. Shockley and make him make tough throws to beat us. Missed his last seven throws. This is another of those ubiquitous third and longs. This is the sixth time, Don. It's been third and ten or more. Here comes the blitz. Shockley across the middle. And he makes a huge throw to his tight end, Leonard Polk. I'm not sure DJ Shockley has made a bigger throw in his career. I mean, this one right here, the pressure's coming this way, but Pope is right here on the left side of his screen, and he finds him, and he gets him the football for a much-needed first down. If for no other reason, he's got to make some plays to try to flip field position. Georgia Tech has not snapped the ball in their own territory the entire second half. Needed 14, got 17. It's a fresh series of downs. 
Here's Shockley, left side, Reggie Brown down low, made the grab at the 29. Well, the two losses this year have come at home on this field to Tennessee and at Auburn. And in those two, they averaged 70.5 yards. Look at that, two yards. And again, it's a little deceiving right. because of sack yardage because they've been able to pressure and sack the quarterback when they've tried to throw a couple screen passes. But uh, still a valiant effort by John Tanuta's defense here stopping the Georgia running back. Second down and six. This is Thomas Brown going right. Leaves across the 35. That's another Georgia first down. And they can at least have sight of the 50-yard line for the first time. They've got to try to flip the field. And remember this, Georgia is still winning the game. Georgia has never trailed in this football game. And yet the feel is that Georgia Tech is winning because they've dominated since halftime. But, but Georgia still leads on the scoreboard. And all that they, they need to do, I mean, obviously you'd love to get points here, but the best thing you can do is to flip the field position and give your defense a better opportunity when they come on the field again. High formation on first and ten. <laughs> Bangs over left tackle and gets to the 40-yard line. It'll be second. And about six. Here's K. Michael Hall with the tackle. Shockley now 5 of 15 for 112 yards. That's a career high. Almost half of that, well, exactly half of it, came on one play, a big one yeah. that preceded his touchdown toss to Reggie Brown. He hit one for 53 yards to Sean Bailey in the second quarter. Here's the change. James Butler with the blitz. They run it. Thomas Brown played by Butler. This was a great play by James Butler because he blitzed and they ran away from the blitz and it looked like they might have had a good play because the blitz was coming from the other side and Butler chased it down. I mean, he just didn't give up on the play. We talk about David Pollock not giving up on a play. James Butler, a great hustle play on that running stop. Watch James Butler, 22, is going to come the blitz here. The run goes this way, but he chases it down. Watch him not give up on the play, chase down Thomas Brown and hang on for dear life and get a little help from Chris Reese. That's an excellent play by the senior safety. Third and five, nine minutes to go. And Georgia by three, they have to use a timeout. That is their first in this half. 16-13, Bulldogs over the Yellow Jackets. 9.02 to go in the ball game. Georgia led by as many as 16. They were up 16-0 at the half. Ugga was quite happy then and particularly thrilled when the rain stopped, which it did midway through the third quarter. Chased about half the fans out of here, but they've missed a dandy as Georgia Tech has fought back to within three. Now third and five. Georgia with the ball and a three-point lead. Shockley back. Fires it at the last minute. He rolled too long. He, he kind of double clutched on that one. And the ball squirted out underneath the receiver. I think it was McClendon, the intended receiver. Eric Henderson pre applying a little pressure from his end position. But you see, he, he started to throw it, and then he reloaded it, and then Henderson was able to, to get there and harass him at the end of the throw. And he scooped it off the grass. Mark Logan is back to return the punt now. Gordon Ely kills it. But again, the field position change could be huge if he gets it up. That was a high snap. Ely oh, Kelso, yeah. and he was under some pressure, and it gets only as far as the 34 yard line. And that is critical because, I mean, if he gets a good snap, Ely Kelso drives a good punt. Georgia Tech's taking the ball over around the 20. Bad snap, bad kick. Georgia Tech with decent field position. Here's the Kelso kick. You see he had to jump up to control the snap. The pressure was coming, but it was only a 22-yard punt. That was still a great play in David Paulus' career. They might need for him to make something of that nature here. Georgia hangs on to a three-point lead. Reggie Ball back at quarterback, fires it left side, and he's caught. By LeVon Thomas, he's got a first down out near the 48. And really, in this second half, uh, I really credit Chan Gailey, 
Patrick Nix because they've done a good job of saying, hey, look, our best players on offense, especially with P.J. Daniels not being 100%, are our wide receivers. we got to get the ball in their hands. So whether it's been Reggie Ball or Demarius Bilbo, they've done a nice job of just throwing and getting those guys the football and letting them make a play. LeVon Thomas, Calvin Johnson, Nate Curry, all involved here in the second half for Georgia Tech. Here comes the pressure ball, goes left side again. Tim Jennings is there defensively. All right, thank you, Tim. And again, congratulations to Mike Price and the Miners. Kind of an extraordinary turnaround for that team, despite the loss today. Here's ball back, deep right side for Calvin Johnson. Miller's there, Miller. Yes, it is, absolutely. But see, Calvin Johnson has gotten into the head of Demario Minter. Demario Minter is not confident at corner right now. He doesn't have confidence that he can cover this guy. And so what's happening is every time he feels like he's beat, he's instinctively grabbing or pulling on Calvin Johnson. See, he's in okay position, but he just instinctively reaches out and grabs him, and that draws the penalty. Now, we should say also, Brian Van Gorder told us he didn't even think Minner was going to be able to play today because ankle. he injured his ankle during the off week, and he did not expect him to play. So he is probably not 100%, and right now he's not playing that position with very much confidence against these wide receivers of Georgia Tech. In this half for DeMario Minner, that's two pass interference calls and a defensive holding call. Problem for Brian Van Gorder is they, they really have nowhere else to go because the other two corners, Kyle Oliver and Thomas Flowers, are both freshmen and have not played a whole lot. Double tight end set on first down after the interference penalty. Now keep it on the ground. Daniels caught and rocked. Can't go sideways against this defense. <laughs> David Pollock with the tackle. I thought it was interesting. One of the things David Pollock told us that as he's gotten older, he's become a more disciplined, gap conscious defender. You know, and when he was a first year playing, he just kind of went wherever he wanted to and was all over the place. But he's much more fundamentally sound, staying in his gap, but still able to make a lot of big plays. Now, we were reminiscing with him yesterday about that South Carolina game, his sophomore season. That was the second game of the year. He said, Yeah, it was kind of memorable. He had. Uh, the interception, he also had a sack, and he had 14 tackles. What became a pretty average game for him. Time to go. That last sack, though, he was one-on-one -on -one against P.J. Daniels, and that uh, that's a major mismatch in the favor of David Pollock. That's his dad, Norm, standing, and his mom, Kelly, who is uh, trying to keep warm, sitting down. They look on as their second son performs on the field his brother and sister are here as well on second down his ball rolling to his right fires it out of bounds at the 33 yard line that will be short of the first down brings up a third down well what a career for number 47 33 sacks most in Georgia history Two-time first-team All-American, 2003 Hendricks Award winner, defensive end of the year, and he's uh, a finalist for a handful of other postseason awards this year. He will leave this school. He's six classes short of his degree, but he plans to go into training for his future career in the pros at the end of this season. Here's Ball, deep left side. He's got a man open. It's caught the oh. ball. At the very end of the play, I think that was Trey Battle, not Thomas Davis or Greg Blue, the two safeties that are known for their big hits. It was Trey Battle who came over and got a big hit at the end of the play. Otherwise, this would be a first down inside the 10-yard line. Good throw. Calvin Johnson has it, and Trey Battle blows up the play. He hit Paul Oliver maybe harder than he hit Calvin Johnson, but he knocked the ball loose nonetheless. What a play by Trey Battle. One time walk on the high school quarterback. It is fourth and six. Curry and Thomas wide left. Johnson is split right. The defensive backs are up on the line. Ball left side incomplete. 
No flags. No flag this time. No flags. Demario Minter looked around right away to see if there was any laundry on the field. But that time there wasn't. Another big fourth down stop. Blue on the rush. Demario Minter on the coverage. And David Green has come back on the field. The fifth year senior will play the final seven minutes, trying to lead his team to victory in his final home game with a cracked bone in his left thumb. The only reason I'm a little surprised by this is because they're not behind. If they were behind at this point, 16, 13, then, and he could go, then I'd say, yeah, okay. But they're still ahead. They've never trailed in the game. He fired that one. It's caught to Reggie Brown. Okay. Obviously, he can throw because he warmed up. The problem is, if he gets hit again, does he make the injury worse? We don't know that. Comes out of there okay. But every time he gets it bumped or banged in any sense, it's going to hurt. And again, he's got to be in the shotgun. He won't be able to take a snap under the center with that broken left thumb. Second down and two. They'll hand this one off. It's Brown coming left. He's got the first down. He's tackled at the 49-yard line. Adam Oliver. Now let's uh, take another look at that fourth down and six for Georgia Tech. Well, fourth down has not been very kind for Georgia Tech today. They've tried it a couple times and failed. Demario Minter in good position, got his right hand in. And Brian Van Gorder, very pleased. File this one away as well with 6.18 to go in the game. Georgia Tech has only one timeout remaining. They've used a couple. First down and 10. Here comes the blitz. They hand it off. Thomas Brown, stiff arm, Brown to the 40. You know, and probably should have said this earlier when it happened, but I I just don't know why they went for that fourth down at that point in the field. If you don't want to try a field goal, at least maybe punt the ball and try to get the field position edge back. Because what's happened now, you give Georgia the ball in good field position, and Georgia Tech's defense, for the first time this half, doesn't look like they have the same energy. And just maybe that failed attempt on fourth down, they just you know don't look the same here in this possession so far. I think about the big play from Trey Battle on that uh, third down play as well. The deep pass to Calvin Absolutely. Johnson. Absolutely. That was the big play because uh, that was a completion. Well, Georgia buys a couple of minutes now with that first down. 5.46 to go. And the clock starts when it is marked ready for play. David Green injured his left thumb. Mark Rick told Tracy Wolfson a cracked bone in his thumb when he hit the helmet of K. Michael Hall in the second quarter. And see, the other thing is what you don't think about is even if you hand the ball off with your left hand, you can hurt it. I mean, it, anything that you do that it gets banged or knocked around is going to cause pain. First and 10 from the 40. They'll hand it off again to Thomas Brown. And he gets nothing on this one. See, the other thing that David Green is doing right now, and, and I'm not saying that DJ Shockley wouldn't do this, but again, David Green, has this is his 51st start. So he's a savvy veteran quarterback. Watch him work the clock now. There's five minutes left in the game, and he is going to let the clock go down as far as it possibly can before he snaps the ball. Because he knows right now, we don't need to score again necessarily. Let's work as much time as we can and hold on to this football. So watch David Green not only run the offense, but manage the clock as well. Play clock under 10. Second and nine. And the snap comes at three. Here's Green behind Brown. It'll be third and nine. Except when you throw incomplete, the clock stops. Yes. <laughs> Which is, you don't want to do. Third and nine. 4.33 to go. Very casual senior comes over. 
Thoughts with Mark Rick heads back to the huddle. Uh, again, it's that poise and composure. I don't know that I've seen anybody over the last several years play that way in pressure situations as calmly as David Green. The snap comes with one second left. Here's Green. Got Reggie Brown. First down at the 27 yard line. This is the stuff of which legends are made. You know what? I notice this offensive line for Georgia sucking it up a little bit too, knowing that their quarterback is hurt, feeling like they've got to protect him a little better. A nice pocket that time for David Green to complete the pass to Reggie Brown. First and ten, they buy another couple of minutes. Georgia Tech can only stop it once. Yeah, I think they want to run the football here, but they've got to do it out of the shotgun because of David Green's thumb. He can't take a snap under the center with this injury. Play clock was at three when the snap was made. Thomas Brown with the 24-yard line. Now let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. In the first half, four of nine. The touchdown pass came after he suffered the cracked bone in his thumb. It was to Fred Gibson. In the second half, he's two of three for 20 yards. Get complete game stats at CBSSportsLine.com. Second and seven. Sweep left, Brown driven down, it'll be third down. Tackle made by Jarris Wilkinson, number 49. She Georgia Tech with the one timeout remaining. Georgia has two. Third and five. David Pollock watching his roommate. David Green. Brown goes right, Sean Bailey comes left. Play clock at four. They'll keep it on the ground, and they will lose yardage. Yeah. Tech will get the ball back. Yep. Is that, that, I don't think that Mark Rick will try a field goal. I don't either. After that play. He may have Ely Kelso try to pooch on it down there inside the 10. Well, and Andy Bailey has missed an extra point today. He's also missed six field goals this year. He's, He's bringing them out. Yep. Bringing Bailey out. Timeout Georgia Tech. They use their last timeout of the game. Andy Bailey, will he get his chance? We'll find out when we come back. We're back and let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Wrangler five star premium denim. It is a third down play and here is the voice of Larry Munson. Done with three wide outs on third and six snap the ball and he's going to throw a long pass down the left side the receivers there it is complete they knocked it out of his hands he tackled him so hard. Well that is uh, <laughs> a tired Larry Munson. And that, uh, after the fourth down play was knocked incomplete, got us to this point, and Andy Bailey will not try the field goal. It's Brandon Cattu. This is his first career field goal attempt. And it comes from 44 yards out. How about the roll of the dice by Mark Rick? Well, he has the stronger leg, but first field goal attempt, there's a little pressure on this one. Lee Jackson will hold, the snap is high, the hold is down, it is good, and so is the kick! Wow! I didn't think Lee Jackson was going to be able to handle that snap. He bobbled it, able to get it down at the last second. My oh my! Brandon Cattu! How do you do? I mean, most times, if a guy comes in for his first field goal attempt and he sees that snap bobble, he'd probably throw a fit. Not Brandon. Three more on the board for Georgia. Let me show you. 19-13, <laughs> -13, Brandon Cattu having knocked it home from 44 yards out. 
will kick off. That's pretty impressive. Yes, it was. You know, it takes something for a kicker to impress me today. That. that was impressive <laughs> by Brandon Coe, too. Now the kickoff. Six point game. Georgia Tech cannot stop the clock with the timeout. He may kick this one to Atlanta. Well, Lawrenceville. At the left side, LeVon Thomas, watch out! And they'll start from the 40. Good field position, and remember, even though Georgia Tech has no timeouts, it is still a one-possession football game. 19-13. Well, one of the magical moments for Georgia this year, and perhaps in recent years, David Green comes on with that broken bone in his left thumb. That was the third and nine that kept the drive alive, ultimately put them into position for this Brandon Katu field goal that increased the lead to six. First down and 10, out of the shotgun. Ball in trouble, gets by Thomas Davis, but he is caught back at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10. And the clock will continue to run. Good pressure that time by the front four of Georgia. They didn't blitz. They had a lot of guys dropped in coverage, but they were able to get enough pressure with four to force ball out of the pocket. On second down. Deep pass. He's got Lamont Thomas. First down at the 20-yard line. 39-yard pass. This time, Georgia chose to only rush three, and they played cover two, which means the safety split. Here's LeVon Thomas, gets right in the middle, and they get it for a big play. They've had this open a couple times in the game. Reggie Ball able to make a huge connection on that one. That's a game of 39. The clock will start when the ball is ready for play. It is now. Here's Ball back. Logs it short. Caught by T.J. Daniels. Watched network. Here comes the rush. They got him. Clinton Moses, the guy who had a costly penalty earlier in the game, a personal foul. This time gets in there free, and Reggie Ball doesn't get rid of the football, and the clock continues to run. Third and 21. Oh, goodness. My goodness, they stopped the clock to set up fourth and 21. That is surprising. Yeah, it's a little tough. I mean, I know you want to make sure you get the right play called, but you got to be able to call a play at the line of scrimmage on third down and, and try to get some of the yardage back so that it's not fourth and 21. Maybe it's fourth and 10. Well, I saw Patrick Nix look at, at Chan Gailey as they were breaking the huddle, and he indicated, let's down it. So they did. Well, and the play clock's at three. They may not even get this play off. It may be fourth and 26. Fourth and 21. David Pollock chasing Reggie Ball. The game on the line. It's going to be Georgia football. How do you throw it away on fourth down? I guess you got David Pollock yeah, messing with your make, mind. Make you do some crazy things. I just think Reggie Ball just, he, he, he lost his composure there in the last part of the drive. He made the big pass play to LeVon Thomas, and then he got sacked, and then two plays in a row. I'm not sure he made a good decision. You, you can't throw it away. I mean, it's fourth down. You've got to try to throw it somewhere near a receiver. Here's Chan Gailey. We asked him yesterday if he could account for the inconsistency of Reggie Ball, and he said, not a clue. And there is no explanation for that, unless he didn't know it was fourth down. I mean, otherwise, there's no explanation for throwing it away. He's arguing with uh, one of the officials. I think that may be the case. Unbelievable. Inexplicable. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it comes to a more than satisfactory end, however, for David Pollock and David Green. It was David Pollock who had the pressure on Reggie Ball, who perhaps did not realize it was fourth down. I'm sure he did. And David Pollock forced him out, and he just threw it away. He thought he was throwing it away to save it for one more play, but it was fourth and 21, not third and 21. Reminds me of Chris Weber in a certain NCAA basketball game.